The concept of an every character's best move, every character's worst move video is something that a lot of people have asked me to cover over time. I've never really felt the need to do it because it seems a bit too similar to other videos that are already on the channel, but luckily, P. Jiggles has me covered here. Today, what I'm going to be doing is looking through these videos, which I have not seen yet. I've always avoided watching them specifically in case I wanted to do a concept like this at some point, and I'm going to be attempting to guess every choice, and then for the few characters that have come out since these were made, okay, I'll give my own take at the end for them. Let's do it. <laughs> So this was partially informed by asking in Smash's character discords. Um, there are some pros and cons to that. I'm going to go over what I personally think the option will be every time, and if I disagree with the character discords, I will say why I disagree. He's also not counting throws, which is completely fair. I have the same policy. Same thing with different getup attacks. Mario's interesting. He doesn't really have much in terms of straight up bad moves. He's a beginner friendly character. You wouldn't necessarily expect that. Um, I might say forward air. It's probably the most usable it's ever been in Ultimate because he can get some really cheesy kill confirms off it, but realistically you don't see it that often. Funny enough, it may actually also be up tilt, which I never thought I'd be saying after the Smash 4 days, but realistically up tilt doesn't really do that much anymore outside of very specific combo extensions on platforms. Yeah, I think you can get more reliable stuff with forward air than you can with up tilt, so I'm gonna say up tilt. Mario's worst move is apparently his up tilt. It doesn't okay. really lead into anything besides itself maybe once. Characters with a fast, low-hitting aerial can usually interrupt it at low percent before Marty can move again. Yeah, that doesn't really matter that much, though. There's a lot of moves that don't combo at zero, right? What you're more concerned with is the band that it can combo for. Or just air dodge out of any potential follow-ups. And now I'm obligated to mention how good the move was in Smash 4, because it was really stupid and good. Yeah, a huge part of the reason why this move used to be so much better is also because it hit grounded opponents reliably. Nowadays, it kinda does that sometimes, but it's mainly just an anti-air. Okay, DK was actually spoiled for me, P. Jiggles doesn't really do much in terms of transitioning between the different characters, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bulk record every guess here and then I'll splice it throughout the video. Link. Down Smash definitely comes to mind for this one, and it's particularly bad in Link's case because it, not only is it a very just kind of generic, you know, back and forth sword down smash, not particularly quick, not especially devastating, but it also directly competes with spin attack, which is faster, and Link also has the killing spin attack. Dash attack is definitely in the picture as well. It's very strong, but it is competing with Link's pivot forward tilt. They're honestly doing like relatively similar stuff. I'll say dash attack, but down smash is in there as well. For Link, it's dash attack. Its main problem is that it's very slow and punishable. It may be kind of strong, but so is forward tilt, which is basically always a better option, especially if you use it after a turnaround cancel. Yeah, on the same page there, pivot cancel, turnaround cancel, same thing. It's kind of unfortunate for Link to be stuck with both forward tilt and dash attack being fairly slow, because it means that he doesn't really have a great quick way to cover in front of himself like that. He's got jab and he's got down tilt, but those are also fairly slow in their own right. Samus and Dark Samus, I feel like the answer in the video is probably going to be jab, just because jab really doesn't do all that much for the character. Their jabs infamously don't combo into themselves. That said, there's still frame 3. Up Smash is also insanely unreliable, like one of the least reliable multi-hit moves in the game, but again, there's not really anything else that replaces the function. My guess is actually going to be Down Smash, again, very generic Down Smash, and it's one of the weaker ones in the game. Samus and Dark Samus's worst move is Homing Missile. Sorry, Elite Smash Warriors, this move- Homing Missile. It has so low knockback that it's basically- Does that count? Can you do that? Yeah, I guess you can do that. With some of my other selections, I actually isolated only certain aspects of them. This is fair. I guess maybe I just should have seen this coming. It also doesn't home in very well at all. You can also just hit it with a weak move, and it goes away. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> that is not impressive. Now, this just hit the projectile argument. I've heard that come up a fair amount. It's not totally valid in every sense, like Ryu players complain about it a lot, but you still absolutely see them getting a lot of use out of Hadouken and Shokunetsu. Yoshi is definitely egg roll. That's one of the absolute worst moves in the game. Yoshi's worst move is, surprising absolutely nobody, his egg roll. There we go. It's got a lot of startup and end lag, absolutely zero combo potential, and it doesn't kill. If you use it in the air, it doesn't have a hitbox and leaves you wide open. It also does like no shield damage, so if you see a Yoshi coming at you with this move, you can just shield it for free. There's a cheese strat you can do with Eggly, but that's never gonna happen if your opponent knows what mashing is. Which they will. Kirby's got a couple of really bad special moves, but I think his hammer is by far the weakest out of all of them. Insanely situational compared to something like stone, where you can at least use it to get out of certain juggling situations. So for Kirby, it's... down air? What? That's like one of the dumbest what? strikes in the game. And a great combo start. No. Right? 
I don't know, man. Like, four people in the Kirby Discord told me it's down here. No. <laughs> what? No. Like, actually, what the f***? I agree that Danner could be better. I think it's got a little bit of unnecessarily high ending lag on it, but it's so good for edge guarding. Who cares if it's not the strongest spike in the game? You can just loop it over and over again. And it's got some true follow ups out of it, too. I know they're a little bit specific, but they do exist. Yeah, no, this is exactly what I was talking about when I said you can't just rely on character discord opinions. I've heard Kirby players complain about Danner before. I get that it could be a little bit better, but this just seems like echo chamber talk to me. There's there's no way. What I was told was, basically every single move in Kirby's kit has a good use. So Kirby doesn't really have a bad move. Find me one good clip of a Kirby player hitting hammer against another good player. No, 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 no. I don't like to use the word objective too much in lists like this, but this is objectively just not true. So I think this is a good point to mention that this video is more so focused on a character's least useful move, as opposed to worst move. Then again, I think that kind of means the same thing. Just keep in mind that worst move doesn't necessarily mean- No, that's useless. fair, but I don't really understand so the earlier yeah. distinction. For Kirby, it's apparently down air. They say it's inconsistent or something, but I usually see it work just fine. Kirby's downer in terms of using it as an edge guard has always seemed very consistent to me. It, yeah, the setups you can get with it are a bit inconsistent because its landing lag is a bit too high, so you need to position yourself pretty specifically, but those options still do exist, and that's not the main purpose of the move to begin with. I even asked about hammer flip, and they told me that even that is a better move. No, it's not. Top Kirby players just essentially don't use Hammer Flip at all unless they're trying to style on an opponent way worse than them. They do use down air. Though it's close. I'll take their word for it. I understand the position P. Jiggles is in here. Once you're committed to the concept of using character discords, you're committed to the concept of using character discords. But... No. I'm sorry, man. No. Does Fox have, like, a single genuinely bad move? I guess I'll say forward smash because the only time you ever really see Fox players use it is on the ledge, but that's still a pretty valid use case. Fox's least useful move is laser. I guess it's nice really? after a back throw or something to get an extra percent in, but it's no longer the crazy neutral defining move that it was in Melee. So, no, it's not, but the thing is, Fox's laser, the main benefit of it is that it gives him an option to force opponents to come to him if he wants it. So if you ever see light, go for lasers at around 90%. He's trying to get you to the exact Back sweet spot yep. for a air up smash. It can be a bit hard to find footage of Fox players using that consistently, but it's the same way that, for example, believe me, speaking as someone who's combed through a lot of smash footage, it can sometimes be surprisingly difficult to find footage of, for example, a character using a reflector against a zoner. And that's because if a character has a reflector, the zoner fundamentally needs to change the way they play their game. So just because you don't actually see their projectiles being reflected constantly, that doesn't mean the reflector is not having an impact on the projectile. So in the case of Fox's laser, it does open up the possibility of him using the laser to force his opponent to come to him. You won't necessarily see that situation pop up all the time. Part of that is also because Fox is generally played as more of a rushdown character but it is on the table and there's no real replacement for that option. Forward smash, you can kind of replace that with down smash or up smash at the ledge, you can replace it with back air. Obviously not a perfect substitute, but I actually disagree with this one. Pikachu, I'm probably going to say up smash. It's not like a bad up smash, but it is kind of known for being worse than a lot of those other similar sort of upwards ones because it does have a sour spot on the tail. For Pikachu, it's jab. It's only real use. Oh, jab. jab um... That's kind of reasonable, but Jab is also frame 2, so it's actually really good at disrupting people up close, and you do see Pikachu players use it for that. His fastest tilt is frame 6, so there's really not anywhere near a proper substitute for that. I don't know about this one. The thing is, we are trying to find a bad move on Pikachu, right? It's not like his up smash is terrible either. Its only real use is jab locking someone, but Pikachu's jab lock isn't that good. Dash attack would basically always be a better option instead of a jab lock. So this I'm just going to put up to the age of the video. That's not really true at all. You see Pikachu players getting pretty regular use out of jab block, and his dash attack is fast enough that you can just do jab block into instant dash attack anyways, which is just free extra damage. Which is because he doesn't really have a good jab block setup. Except down tilt, which still gives you a pretty good tech window. So that's true, and you don't see people get hit by that nearly as often as you used to, but that's not to say they never get hit by it. Human reaction time does not evolve along with video game metas. But the other thing is, that's not actually the only jab block setup Pikachu has access to. Nowadays, back air and Danner are often used as well, because they're multi-hit moves that can be a little bit ambiguous when you're actually going to be launched, and the exact angle you're going to be launched at because of the relatively low knockback. And it also doesn't have a finisher. Meaning that if you want to do like a smash attack out of it or something, you have to time it. 
because if you buffer it, you'll just do another jab. And worst of all, it's negative on hit, meaning that any decently fast down tilt can beat it before Pikachu can do anything out of it that isn't another jab. Yeah, that's fine, but you can just do another jab into shield. It's not really supposed to do anything but disrupt close quarters. Overall, I'm not too concerned about this one. Pikachu gets you know, reasonable use out of up smash and jab, so I can accept it. Luigi, does down taunt count? If down taunt counts, it's obviously down taunt. If it's not allowed, I would say green missile. It's not nearly as easy a move to edge guard as it looks like it should be necessarily. Like, Luigi can be surprisingly slippery, but having to rely on a move like that to recover is still a pretty big issue for him. It pains me to say this, but his worst move is side special. Man. Yeah, okay, so, so I guess he's not factoring in the that taunts. sadly doesn't make it good. It's laggy, super easy to dodge, and very easy to punish. Another contender for Luigi's worst move would be his side tilt. Yeah, his forward tilt's about as basic a poke as you can get, but Green Missile, again, is a major weakness of the character. What makes Green Missile worse is that you don't have to use side tilt whereas you're sometimes forced to use side special to recover. In fact, you're pretty much always forced to use green missile to recover. His up B has essentially no horizontal range whatsoever. If you let yourself get hit by the side special when Luigi's trying to recover with it, he dies. Even the small chance it have of being super strong and fast doesn't save this move. And I think Luigi It is funny though. The misfire isn't always a blessing. Ness, I'm gonna have to say PK Flash. I think it's a bit of an underrated move, but it's still pretty obviously the worst one on his kit. For Ness, it's no surprise, it's yeah. PK Flash. Ness has had this move for four games in a row now, and I'm pretty sure it's been his worst move in every iteration of it. In Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, it's incredibly slow, and its decent power doesn't even make up for its huge startup. Trying to edge guard with it isn't too smart either, because, well, Ness can just do this. Hate that move! And it's not even good as a shield break punish either, because PK Thunder Tackle kills way earlier. Okay, so one thing P Jiggles does not do in this video, though, is show off its uncharged variant. That's fair, because that was a little bit of a later development for the character, but uncharged PK Flash is actually surprisingly good. It's a decent anti-air that goes way above him, and he actually gets some degree of follow-ups off it now. So in Ultimate, it's by far the best it's ever been, not even close, even if you still don't use the charged variant, like, at all. But even if the logic is a bit different, the conclusion's the same. Captain Falcon, Falcon Punch. Captain Falcon's worst move is perhaps the most iconic move in Smash Brothers history, Falcon Punch. What else was it's it possibly gonna be? Is, it's slow, very slow, on the characters whose moves are usually very fast. Missing an offstage almost always means you're dead. Ford Smash is apparently also not that good, but it's way better at covering roll reads and stuff. Raptor Boost is a close second because it's inconsistent and no, no, Raptor Boost is broken. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, when was this video made? Okay, it was made several months before the patch that turned Raptor Boost into this just insanely consistent armored combo tool. I still disagree that it was ever a close contender with Falcon Punch, but fair enough. Jigglypuff, that's definitely gonna be a rollout. Sing might have been a contender in some previous games, although even then you could do like ledge cheese with it. Rollouts always sucked. You've been plaguing my channel for almost four years now, which means that I got quite some things to say about you. Recurring staple for Pidgeagles. Special occasion. Let's save you for the end of this video, because it's gonna oh. take a while. Okay, I guess we'll come back. Now and going straight to Peach and Daisy. Peach and Daisy, their up tilt is pretty bad. Really only covers directly above them and doesn't do all that much. You can actually say about the same for forward tilt, though. Yeah, I'm gonna say forward tilt. I don't even really know what that move is supposed to do. Their worst move is up tilt. Or I would say that if it was actually known what their worst move is. In the Peach and Daisy Discord, I started a gigantic discussion by asking what their worst move is. Oh, what the hell? A bunch of people said it was up tilt, and another bunch of people said it's forward tilt. This discussion went on for about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna choose myself, and I say up tilt is worse. These okay, moves fair enough. The problem is that they're both heavily outclassed by other moves, especially since Peach can use all of her amazing aerials on the ground in very rapid succession. Up tilt's only niche use is using it to pressure someone shielding on a platform, and forward tilt's only real use is using it after a down throw at low percent. The reason I think forward tilt is a little better is because Peach can use other way safer aerials to pressure platforms, and you might want to use forward tilt after a down throw at low percent instead of back air as to not steal back air, which is one of her best moves for sure. I don't think the staling thing necessarily matters, like, at all, but I do kind of see how you could argue that there are a few more use cases for forward tilt compared to up tilt. Like I said, it was super close between these two. I'm honestly fine with the logic here. Bowser.
Bowser. Bowser has some good moves. He's also got a couple of pretty reasonable candidates, though. I know Down Tilt was really heavily nerfed from Smash 4. It has way less knockback, but it's still a reasonable two-frame option. Of course, he also has Forward Tilt, which is an insane two-frame option, so I don't really know why you would use Down Tilt. And then Bowser Bomb would be on the table, too. The thing about Bowser Bomb, though, is it's actually used decently often because you can use it to snap to ledge safely, or, you know, at least reasonably safely to the degree essentially no character really wants to challenge it. I'm gonna say Down Tilt for this one. Down Tilt, I think, is pretty much completely outclassed by Downward Angled Forward Tilt. Bowser. His yep. least useful move is Down Tilt, which might come as a surprise since it's pretty strong and can two-frame. However, all of Bowser's moves are strong. He's a big boy. Forward Tilt can two-frame as well, which comes out just as fast and kills way earlier. Yeah. Also, both hits have a small trip chance, which is bad on the first hit because the second hit will always hit them out of it, and on the second hit it's also basically useless because the only follow-up you can get out of it is dash attack, which requires inhumanly fast reaction time and it's not that great of a move either. There are a lot of moves that can weirdly randomly trip and smash way more than you'd think, and I kinda hate it to be honest. Basically, down tilt is outclassed by forward tilt in almost every way. Yeah, ice climbers. I have never played the ice climbers and that makes this very hard to do because their moves are so dependent on what you can do with desyncs and stuff. You know, one move that doesn't apply to though is down air. Whether there's one or two of them, down air is just awful all around. They weren't eligible for my worst of every smash move video because I banned duo mechanics, but if they were eligible, they'd probably make the list. For the ices, it's dash attack. This move dash is attack. actually garbage because it does nothing. It doesn't combo, it doesn't kill, it's frame 11 which makes it exactly as fast as their forward smash. You know, that's actually fair. I didn't realize it was quite that bad. Danner and dash attack are both really bad, but you could make the argument that Danner is filling a bit more of a niche. It's very laggy, its hitbox is honestly pretty terrible, <laughs> what and the worst hell? of all, if you use it too far or too close to your enemy, Nana's hit straight up won't connect making it only deal about 7 damage. Okay, I agree, I got this one wrong, it's definitely dash attack. This might very well be one of the worst moves in the entire game. Apparently there's a tech called special storage that makes it somewhat usable, but I'm not gonna even attempt to do that. <laughs> as we all know, Ice Climber's tech requires you to grow an extra pair of hands, and even with this special storage, Dash Attack would probably still be their worst move. Okay, I'd never heard of this before. Here's a guide for it if you want to go look it up yourself. I'm not even going to try to incorporate it into this. Bottom line, it does not change my opinion. Also, I'd like to give an honorable mention to Up Special, because the Ice Climbers Discord taught me that letting yourself get hit by Nana means Popo goes nowhere. Which really sucks because it's their recovery move. To be fair, that is pretty bad, but I would still be giving runner up to down air over this. And then she. I definitely want to say up tilt is on the table here. I know you can use it for like jab locks on platforms and it does combo into bouncing fish, but it's overall a pretty niche specific move in her kit. In the past, I might have said burst grenade, but Sheik players have actually gotten a lot better about using that, in particular using it to make their return to the ledge much safer. For Sheik, it's multi-jab. There's nothing really wrong with this move per se. It's just that jab 1 and 2 can both lead into down tilt or forward tilt, which at low percent can lead to some combos, mm. and at high percent can lead to a kill. Yeah, but that doesn't... What does that have to do with her regular jab? And you do see Sheik means go for rapid jab pretty often, just as, you know, a check out of a uh, forward air on shield or something along those lines. The Sheik combo stuff with jab starts getting way better later on, but sometimes, you know, you just want to mash A. It is kind of cool that Sheik actually gets to incorporate some jab cancel stuff, though very few characters in Ultimate get to do that. It's not 100% guaranteed, but the jab 1 into down tilt setup is honestly a pretty viable kill setup. Basically, using multi-jab means you might have thrown away some more potential damage or even a kill which is why it's her least useful move. I understand the logic behind this one. Honestly, I don't agree with it, though. That's not really the way I think about the game. I would still say up tilt. My mind hasn't been changed here. Zelda, I'm probably going to say neutral error. It did get patched later on to be less inconsistent, but it's still pretty inconsistent. And even if you take that away, it's still not like an incredible neutral error. It does do some good stuff, but it's still pretty stubby. And for Sheik's true appearance, it's forward tilt. It's got quite some range on um, it, and it actually is pretty strong. However, it has quite some end lag too, and it's frame 12. So why would you ever try to kill with this if you can just... Literally the month after this video got made, her forward tilt got massively buffed and is now a way better kill move, so for the time period, okay. Dr. Mario, I'm gonna say the same up tilt thing I said with Mario. For Dr. Mario, it's down tilt. Down tilt? confirm is up air, 
but only if you stand super close to your opponent. At low percent it puts you in a bad spot because if you don't shield, the enemy might be able to hit you or trade with you. Okay, again, down tilt got hugely buffed a month later. I actually completely forgot they buffed that move. Pichu, definitely don't think this one can be up smash. Pichu's moves in general are honestly just kind of insane across the board for the most part. Um, Oh, you know one move that's not true on? Agility. Agility is quick attack minus the hitbox with all of the same vulnerability that comes with using quick attack, so that's pretty bad. Less so because the move is unusable. As far as recovery distance goes, it's still pretty decent, but it's a mediocre move, and you can't really say that for much else in Pichu's kit at all. Alright, watch this. For Pichu, it's side special. I guess if you're not confident in doing one of Pichu's easy combos if you get a shield break, you can fully charge it to almost do 40 damage. The negative disjoint isn't a good thing, obviously, but it's still a huge boost to your recovery, and Skull Bash can be pretty good on shield, though. It's not as good as Pikachu's Skull Bash, but... Uh... I don't know about this one. Even Pichu's jab is better, because his jab lock is actually amazing, since forward smash doesn't have a sour spot, which Pikachu's does. Yeah, but Pikachu can do like run back, charge, up smash to cast their DI, he can do dance smash, which is pretty damn good, like better than it has any right to be. I honestly don't think that's enough of a distinction. I would still say up special personally, but if you're gonna say that Pikachu's worst one is his jab, I would argue that Pichu should be in there too. Falco. Falco's dash attack sucks, it's way worse than Fox's, nowhere near the same kind of reward to it and it's way less safe. It is, you know, still a reasonably quick dash attack and at least for instant dash attack use at all, it's gotta have some consideration there. Basically any moderately fast dash attack won't be useless just because that's a burst movement option that's reasonably quick and that's a valuable thing to have on essentially any character. His forward smash is also pretty bad. It's fairly slow, not that long ranged, and it's got a sour spot on it. Firebird though, Firebird does not go very far, like it goes a fraction of the distance that Foxes does. Falco doesn't really use it as much because he's got his double jump, that's the main trade-off for it. But if you are forced to use it, you're in a really rough spot. Hmm. You know what, I'm gonna say dash attack. For Falco, you might be surprised to hear this, it's down tilt. It did get buffed later on, but it was not a bad move to begin with. Let's hear the argument. Down tilt's only real use is killing at percentages where up tilt to back air doesn't work anymore. That's a good use, and though. Only really the sweet spot of down tilt kills reliably, for which you have to stand basically inside your opponent. It's actually a pretty safe down tilt on shield, too. It's not the most safe on shield, but a lot of characters can struggle to punish it if you space it decently. That's a pretty useful asset for a character to have. And at that point, you might as well use down smash which is faster, and even if it doesn't kill, it still sets up for Falco's incredible edge guards. It can to frame, but like I said, Falco's edge guarding is amazing, so you're better off going for that. Yeah, and you would use Dance Smash to two frame anyways. To frame. Down Smash does a way better. There you go. Yeah, not on board with this one, even pre-buff. Martha and Lucina, I think it's definitely dash attack. That move is completely usurped by pivot cancel forward tilt, and it's not even quick enough to be used for burst movement in instant dash attack scenarios the same way. For Martha and Lucina, no surprise here. It's dash attack. Their dash attack is not it has good. A lot of startup and gigantic ant lag, even for a dash attack. Dash cancel forward smash is basically always a better option. Uh, no. Pivot cancel forward tilt is probably a better option essentially all of the time. I don't know about forward smash. That's way more committal. It's also not great for killing with Mart's tipper because turnaround cancel forward tilt kills way sooner. Yeah, so just use forward tilt instead. Mart's forward tilt is ridiculous. And for Lucina, dash cancel forward smash is a million times better because her forward smash is amazing. I don't know if I would say her forward smash is amazing. It was amazing at the beginning of Ultimate, but it was actually nerfed very early on into the game's life. It's good, but again, I would make the same forward tilt instead of forward smash argument. You can obviously use forward smash, but forward tilt is generally a much more versatile option. Young Link, um, forward tilt is definitely on the table here. That one is nowhere near as good as Link's because of the range difference. Down smash has the same problem as adult Link's too. It's actually the same frame as spin attack though, and it's got some ledge use. It's also like really unsafe on shield, and Young Link isn't really that much of a tech chase character. Young Link has an incredible kit. It might even be the best overall kit in the game. However, I don't know about that. that amazing moveset is one terrible move, and that would be his Zer. It has way too much knockback at Zer. I guess that does count, and this move got massively buffed later on to the game's life. It wasn't very good to begin with. Okay, I should have called this one. It has way too much knockback at 0% to be able to combo into anything that isn't dash attack. And if you're going for Zer into dash attack at 0% with Yun Link, 
then honestly, what are you doing playing this character? Even a simple first hit of back air into forward tilt does more damage than that. I found that it can lead into dash attack at kill percent, but it's not like Young Link has trouble killing anyways. Is it not? I've often heard that brought up as kind of one of the bigger flaws of the character. He kind of needs to rely on some relatively specific confirms because his stray hits are very stubby, and those confirms can often be a little bit finicky to try and land too. If you use it off stage to try and edge guard someone, you're more than likely going to die because of how much end lag it has. You deserve to die for trying to go for a Zare edge guard with Young Link. Use literally anything else. Drop a bomb, go off with Nair, go off with Dare, use a reverse up B. Sometimes Darwinism just needs to come into play. I guess you could try to use it to recover, but his up special is already really good at that. So people got way better at exploiting this over time. I would actually say that Young Link's up special is not an amazing recovery. It's actually one of his weaker elements. Which, you know what, if you factor that use case in, it might actually make me say that no, this still shouldn't be considered considered his worst move. Because even if pre-patch it was a pretty garbage actual attack, this is a really important use case. Ganondorf, it's Warlock Punch. Volcano Kick and Warlock Punch are both kind of on the table here. Warlock Punch, though, is not really used for anything besides Shield Breaks, where at least Volcano Kick, you see like at least a bit of experimentation with certain two-frame setups and stuff like that. Situations where you've scared your opponent, it's not good. Don't get me wrong, it's terrible. But you do see the gimmick payoff a bit more often than with Warlock Punch. Ganondorf has two big contenders. Warlock Punch and Up Tilt. So which one is worse? Up Tilt by far. Okay, let's hear him out. The win box it has might actually make the move worse than it would be without it. At least Warlock Punch has some crazy armor. That should never actually come into effect at like higher levels of play though. And it's Ganondorf's best option out of his shield break. And Ganondorf is definitely able to break shields. So this is the argument I've heard before for why Warlock Punch is better than, say, Falcon Punch or something along those lines, because it's just so much raw power so that it's better as a shield breaking tool. It kind of depends on the way you see the game, right? But actually, in retrospect, on Ganondorf's kit specifically, P. Jiggles is right that he is a better shield breaker character than a lot of them. Stuff like Up Smash, Forward Smash, Danner, they're all pretty decent shield breakers. As a standalone move, it's definitely a lot worse than Up Tilt, but Up Tilt is still bad enough that, yeah, you know what, okay, I think I've had my mind changed here. I guess I did promise to talk about rollout at the end, didn't I? Rollout is by far Jigglypuff's worst move, and by extension, one of the worst moves in the entire game. Sure, Jigglypuff yeah. goes crazy fast when it's at full power, but- Oh, whoa! I didn't realize that was a thing. In order to get the full power, you have to charge it for almost a full second, at which point anyone has more than enough time to get in the air and stay there until the game automatically decides to let her rip after about two seconds, because in Smash Ultimate you can no longer hold the rollout infinitely like you could in Smash 4. Does that really matter though? If you were charging it for anywhere near that amount of time, your opponent was just going to have more time to set up. Rollouts can at least cause some kind of panic options, specifically on flat stages like Final Destination. If there's a platform of any kind, forget get it, but you do see, like, Hungrybox as an example, use it as kind of a gimmicky option every now and then, specifically on FD. Admittedly, that strategy just falls off a cliff once you start facing better players, but it can be out long enough that avoiding it can be a little bit on the tricky side. Sometimes, for some characters, it's not really that big a deal, though. And even if he for some reason doesn't decide to jump and instead shield it, his shield will be halved. And at this point, the opponent will think, uh-oh. If Jigglypuff turns around and hits me again, my shield will be broken. So oh, they're gonna jump. Good thing I can just jump yeah. out of my shield before that happens. So the real intimidation comes from Jigglypuff just charging rollout at what I guess would be an unreactable range, and that would be why you would want to be holding your shield ahead of time, and that's why it starts getting threatening. That would be the main benefit of Smash 4's infinite charge variation, because I guess the argument is that you would get in your opponent's unreactable burst range, and then just start charging rollout and force your opponent to shield, and then it becomes a bit more of a gamble. I'm really grasping at Draws, though, that's still not good. If you're the Jigglypuff, however, try not to turn around too fast because, whoops, the hitbox disappears instantly when turning around. Ooh, Speaking of the hitbox, that's rough. it looks like this. Pretty pathetic, right? There's negative disjoints, and then there's rollout. I have not seen that hitbox before. They often put this kind of stuff on these, like, zoom forward special moves. This is probably the worst example I've seen of it, though. Now let's talk about its power, or lack thereof. If you fully charge it, it's kinda strong, I guess? Not really, though. But if you charge forward smash for exactly the same amount of time, it's way stronger. Yeah, but they're completely different moves, I don't necessarily know if that matters, they do different stuff. Now we're gonna talk about the aerial version. Ooh. 
the aerial version is somehow even worse than the grounded version. <laughs> Since Rollo is really fast and has an active hitbox, you might think it's a pretty good recovery tool. No, but it is a recovery tool. Kind of. No, not really. Boy, do I have bad news for you. Mm -hmm. If you hit Rollo in the air, Jigglypuff will bounce upwards and then come crashing downwards like- Yeah, that's the main problem with it. Left and right a little bit during this, but it's got some started before you're strafing at max speed, at which point you'll be dead. I have no idea why that's still a thing. The move was bad enough. This was such an unnecessary thing to slap on top of it. It feels like a joke. You know, the funny animation kind of reinforces that point a little bit more. It's not a very good joke, though. You can just let yourself get hit by it, and then she dies. There you go. Now, if you fail to let yourself get hit by Jigglypuff, she can actually cancel roll it by grabbing the ledge. It's a pretty tight window, though, and if you fail, then... She mm -hmm. dies. Now, if you're fighting an inanimate object and catch it shielding on the ledge way too much, you can go for this sick double hit on shield, which will result in them dying. I've literally never actually seen this happen. Don't use rollout too close to the ledge, though. Because if you do, Jigglypuff will be shot off stage at Mach 10 and she will die. Oh no. <laughs> Boy, does it feel good to finally rant about Rollout like that. Longtime fans of the channel will probably feel my frustration with this move. They actually buffed it a little in the most recent patch to make it a bit quicker, but it's still garbage. Yeah, that doesn't anyway, matter at all. Thanks for watching. The charge time was not the issue. Rollout just needs to be replaced at this point. I have no idea why it's still on her kit. For Mewtwo, I'm going to say Danner just because it's a pretty straightforward standard spike and basically every other move he has is at least good, if not incredible. His up air isn't really the best take on that kind of move, but you know, it still gets the job done. Yeah, looking through his move list, I don't really see anything else that compares to Danner. Mewtwo's worst move is his up smash. Its hitbox is the set up smash. Small, and apparently small characters can fall out of it. Yeah, I mean, it does kind of have a bit of the hero thing or the Belmont thing where you basically just need to use it above you. But. The scooping hitbox only lasts for one frame, meaning that if you shield it, most characters will not get hit at all. Uh, a lot of ending lag, this means you can expect a pretty big punish. Yeah, but Mewtwo is really good at putting opponents onto platforms, and I know you can go for a, like, confusion into forward air in that situation, or you can go for a disable, which is a very early kill, but you can also follow it up with up smash, which is still, like, a beast of a kill move, and even sometimes out of a disable, you would still use up smash. It is pretty strong, though, but with no DI, down smash sends basically exactly as high. Up smash only kills 1% earlier at the top blast zone. Fair enough, and Mewtwo's dance smash is actually one of the more underrated moves in the game, and in my opinion, it's kind of stupid. But dance smashes and up smashes don't really need to do the same thing. Also, the Mewtwo Discord showed me this video, which I just had to share with y'all. That was- no- oh! oh! No! No! <laughs> yeah, it's kind of on the edge, but he had time to get closer. I don't really think that's the move's fault, honestly. I'm not quite sure if I'm convinced about this one or not. The only thing you could say about Danner is that Mewtwo does sometimes use it to try and force a landing because he really doesn't have much else to work with. Not going to get up in arms about this one, though. Roy, I'm going to say his worst move is down air. It's one of the least reliable spikes in the game, and you almost never see Roy players actually go for it. Dash attack is a candidate, too, but at least Roy is really fast, so it's reasonable to catch landings with and stuff like that. Crom has basically the same remarks as Roy, but I'm actually going to say his his worst move is his up special, the Soaring Slash. It's a pretty good out of shield move, and it also just does some ridiculous damage and you can get some really cheesy setups with it. At the same time though, being forced to use it for recovery is basically the only thing keeping Krom in check. Like, if Krom had Roy's up B, he might legitimately be the best character in the game, you know what I mean? Or if he's not the literal best, he's gotta be like a top 5 bare minimum. So if there's a single move that's holding back your viability so much, how can I not call it your worst one? For both Roy and Krom, it's Down Smash. It really uh, has two very simple problems. Down Smash is a move I considered bringing up for Roy, not for Krom, but I'll listen to the argument. I think it's probably just a different philosophy. It really only has two very simple problems. Those being that the move has a lot of end lag and doesn't kill very well at all. The back hit is a little stronger, I guess, but the most realistic situation where you'd ever hit that is if you catch a roll from ledge, in which case the move wouldn't kill very well anyway since they're sent to the complete opposite blast zone. It's actually kind of rare for these sweep to both sides down smashes to be fantastic kill moves. Obviously it happens, Wolf would have something to say about that, but I would argue that the main benefit of these moves are not ledge pressure, it's that they can catch more tech chase stuff, you can kind of cover multiple options at the same time, and Roy is very much a tech chase character, but in practice you don't really see them go for down smash, that's fair enough. Like, if you can accurately read a tech roll into forward smash or double edge dance, oh my god, you can kill them early. Even forward tilt, which is super fast, kills way earlier. 
In Krom's case, this move is just super weak in general since you don't have a sweet spot. Roy, I can actually get on board a bit with this one. I think in practice you do see down air used slightly more often, but it's also even less of a consistent move. Krom, no, I would still absolutely say Soaring Slash, but it kind of, again, depends a bit on how you see the game. Mr. Game & Watch, there are basically two moves that come to mind here. His up tilt is kind of lame, hitbox is not that good, it's not particularly fast or reliable, but it does combo into some stuff. And then you've also got Judge, which is a huge gamble that most of the time doesn't pay off, but it does specifically have like down throw into Judge setups if you just feel like gambling and you know, one out of nine times you completely steal an opponent's stock. I think the average payoff you'd get though if you always went for Judge out of down throw compared to just going for standard Game & Watch stuff is a substantial downgrade. So I'm gonna say Judge. All right, you saw the thumbnail. You might have already left a comment without watching the video first. Game & Watch's worst move is his famous side special, Judge. Just for the record, this is why sometimes in my thumbnails I put moves which are actually going to appear in the video in the thumbnail and sometimes I don't and sometimes it's a mix. It's to keep you on your toes so you're never 100% sure if the video has been spoiled for you or not. Yeah, rolling a 9 means it's crazy strong and can potentially take stocks at 0%, but that's just it. 9 can do that. All the other 8 numbers he can roll aren't that good. Some of them are okay, but none of them are worth the frame data on that, I will agree there. 7 is the only other arguably good one, since it drops 3 apples, which can heal a collective 12%. 12%. That's not that much. You need to factor in the discrepancy in percent, though. So here's the part where I go for a 7. My god, that took a long time. Okay, so... Here's the discrepancy in percent afterwards. Both characters started out at 100, Mario took 16.8, Game & Watch healed for 12, so you can think of that as the move doing 28.8%, which is really good, right? Now, there are obviously some caveats to that. Game & Watch gave up some of his advantage setup time in order to get the apples, and there's no way you're even going to be at the correct percentage to be healing 12% every time. But in a lot of reasonable circumstances, I would still say that 7 is actually, like, quite good. And keep in mind, this move is kind of laggy, so miss good means you can get punished. Basically, it only has a 1 in 9 chance of being good, which means that it also has a 1 in 9 chance of being god awful, because it'll do 14.4% recoil damage if you roll a 1, whether you hit with it or not. The 1 also doesn't have any hit stun, meaning that you can take even more damage very easily. So a couple points there, again, you're never going to use this move standalone, it's god awful in that context. The fact that you can do throw combos into it is what makes it arguable rather than just inevitably his worst move, and I disagree that everything besides 9 and 7 is useless, some of the other ones are okay, they do reasonable damage at least, but the fact that one exists just alone, just that, is enough to make the move essentially not worth using, because you need to think of it in the long term, right? Again, if you always go for the hammer out of a down throw at early percents, the fact that it hurts you so badly, not only the fact that you're the one taking that recoil damage, but also the fact that your opponent can like immediately come down and punish you, that just undoes so much of the good that rolling a 9 can do. Again, we're talking in averages here. Also, aside Aside from 3 and 9, this move does basically no shield damage, so most of the time you can just shield it for free. In short, this move is way too luck dependent to be good. It's a fun move though, which is enough for me personally. Yeah, that's totally fair, this move isn't really supposed to be good. I'm on board with that. If you want to go for Hail Mary hammer throw combos, by all means, be my guest. I don't think that's necessarily an awful thing to have in the game, even from a tournament perspective. Meta Knight's forward air is stubby and doesn't have particularly good payoff, and it's really unreliable. I think I'm pretty confident on that one. It's not a particularly safe forward air on shield either, and it was also even worse at the time this video was made. It did get buffed later into Ultimate's life. I think I would still choose it though, for the record. Meta Knight is another case where he doesn't have a bad move, but his least useful move is his up tilt. Um, its horizontal range is not great and it doesn't really have any follow-up potential since most characters can just jump out of it. I thought up till did have follow-up potential, maybe that's more of a Smash 4 thing. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it does have some follow-ups out of it, but only a percents where you just need to go for a raw up tilt rather than comboing into the up tilt, it looks like. I'm not a Meta Knight player, there could be stuff I'm missing here, but yeah, that is actually significantly worse than I expected it to be. It doesn't make forward air good, but I think, you know what, fair enough, I got this one wrong. Because even if Meta Knight wishes he had a better forward air, he does kind of have to use forward air sometimes anyways. 
I don't really see why you would have to use up tilt. It can be used after dash attack at low percents, but that's super inconsistent and it's not a great anti-air either since the horizontal hitbox isn't that big. Yeah, that's the main problem, it's just so skinny. Meta Knight is a fairly fast character on the ground, so you probably could force yourself into catching landings with up tilt sometimes, but the only real benefit is that it leads into an up air and you could just use up air to do the same thing, right? Up smash and dash attack and neutral air all seem more reliable to catch landings with too. I guess the main perk of up tilt is that it puts your opponent a little bit higher in the air, so technically in some situations it could be ideal because you could start your ladder combo from a bit higher up, but in Smash, consistency seems to rule and just going straight for the first up air seems generally way more consistent. And you can just up air to catch landings, which is only one frame yeah, exactly. with the jump squad, and allows for more follow-ups. Pit and Dark Pit, so... I mean Dark Pit, I have some opinions on these characters. Their forward airs are really mediocre, their hitboxes don't line up with the animation at all, but they still need forward air. I feel like some people might say up tilt, but that move actually has a lot of use cases for them now, particularly since being buffed. Down air, back air, they're both too reliant on their sweet spot to be fair, but for the record, both of those moves actually have a lot of utility in their own ways. Their side specials are pretty bad standalone, but they do get some decent use out of them in terms of recovery. Forward tilt lingers for a long time, so it's good at catching ledge getups, and it's also just a generally good spacing for forward tilt, it does kill for both pit and dark pit in ultimate. This one's actually trickier than I expected. The pits aren't really characters known for having a lot of like bad moves, they're just kind of characters with a lot of fair moves. I'm gonna have to say they're side specials because outside of recovery use, they're fairly limited. For both pit and dark pit, it's up air. Uh, so it's very easy to DI. And this move was buffed in a patch to make it a pretty like solid kill option. Before the patch, it was not good at killing at all for really no reason at all. That said though, even before the patch, it was still a very, very good juggling tool and you could still do drag down stuff with it. The drag down stuff is less consistent with the pits than it is with a lot of other characters, but you can still do like landing up air and up smash and stuff like that. That was a thing beforehand. If you fast fall, the opponent will almost always fall out. That does and suck. sometimes that even happens without fast falling. Yay. That does suck. The main issue is really that it doesn't kill, whereas all his other aerials are pretty good at killing. Even neutral air kills better, which is meant to be a combo tool. Mm -hmm. With up air, the actual hitboxes themselves are at least reasonably designed. The main issue is that popping out is still a bit of a thing. It's not that bad. I'm going to say it's definitely better than with some of his other aerials, but I have absolutely had it happen to me. Nowadays, no, absolutely not. Pit actually has some reasonable kill confirms into up air. Back then, questionable, honestly. It always gets a bit murkier when you're talking about moves with recovery applications, though. Zero Suit Samus. So her forward air is really unreliable, like notoriously unreliable. I feel terrible for Zero Suit Samus players having to deal with that thing, but her forward smash is like god awful. One of the worst ones in the game. For good Samus, it's forward smash. Absolutely. There is just never a good reason to use this move over something else. Nair into down B is always a better kill option, since it's a great kill confirm because Nair is an amazing approach tool. You might think it's a good option after down smash, but use up B. But guess what? Up B both comes out faster and kills way earlier. Yeah, it's hard to ever say a move is truly outclassed in every possible situation. I'm sure there are some scenarios where you'd rather use forward smash than other tools in Zero Suit Samus's kit, but there's so few and far between. I'd say up B really is one of the most straight up outclassing situations in the entire game. Wario's got a couple of really bad moves. One of the slowest jabs in the game with virtually no payoff whatsoever. That's pretty terrible. His down smash though is tiny and it's one of the least safe down smashes in the game. I know recently we've seen Gluttony use down smash just a little bit from time to time in tech chase situations, but that's not enough to make me give the move a huge boost. We already knew it could do that, the vast majority of dance smashes in the game can do that. Jab is terrible, but at least there's a bit of a, you know, jab 1-2 mix up on shield thing you can do. Yeah, Wario, I'm gonna say dance smash. Wario's worst move is his jab. It's slow Okay, respectable. Range. Down tilt comes out faster and has way more range. Its only use is sending opponents in a tech situation on platforms, which is still a super niche use. That's not awful to be fair, especially because Wario can potentially get a lot of stuff off platforms, but if you're looking for that kind of setup, did you know that falling up air is negative 2 on shield for some reason? At low percent, when down tilt has no true follow-ups, you can use jab instead to just do 10 damage. But at that point, you might as well do dash attack, which comes out faster and does more damage. Wait, dash attack Smash. comes out faster than jab? Jab frame 8? Dash attack frame 5? Don't trust anyone who says the nerfs killed Wario. Propaganda. In Smash 4, this move was incredible when used by the amazing Wario Man. This was a fun because final smash. 
Man, I miss this Final Smash. Yeah, me too. Final Smash is, I kind of get the design philosophy behind like consolidating them in Ultimate, making the match flow sort of stay more consistent. But I really do miss some of these more freeform ones. Snake, I gotta say forward air. It does work a little bit better in Snake's kit specifically because he's got like grenade setups and stuff like that, but it doesn't make it good. Snake with a solid forward air, like something he could actually use to reliably cover his front while he's landing, that's a scary thought. Thankfully, he does not have that. Snake's worst move is his up air. Definitely another not bad, but uh, what? for sure scenario. What the Snake Discord told me was that his other aerials just do what it can a bit better. It can be used after- I don't agree with that. But its hitbox is too narrow to get it consistently. No, that's a regular confirm you see Snake mains go for. I don't know if I'd go as far as calling it a staple confirm, but you see explosives into up air a hell of a lot more than you see anything into forward air. I'm not even willing to chalk it up to just add this aged poorly thing because I saw those confirms used like right from the start of Ultimate's life and none of these moves were ever patched. And Snake is better at staying on the ground and catching landings anyways, so there's no need to try and catch landings with up air. No, but Again, that's not what it's used for. Bad move, but his least useful one for sure. No, I'm not convinced with this one at all. It's forward air and it always has been forward air. I, he does have one of the weaker counters in the game, but I think it's got to be one of his smash attacks. Not only are they exceptionally slow and situational, but they also have sour spots on them for some godforsaken reason. I have no idea why that's a thing. Forward smash and up smash are by far the two slowest. I think that up smash at the very least it has coverage on a platform or something like that. Forward smash really only works for hard reads. For Ike, it's his down smash. Ike is just uh... not really standing on the ledge. His best tool for it is eruption since it hits low enough even when it's uncharged. It's a perfectly functional both sides coverage down smash and it's even a bit fast by the standards of his kit. If down smash could two frame, it would actually be pretty useful for it since it's strong. It kills Mario as soon as 73% if he's standing on the ledge. It is very committal to go for though, and honestly it is a bit of a shame that it doesn't two-frame. I think most moves in Smash that look like they should two-frame just should for clarity's sake. Ike in particular isn't really a character that is missing having a down Smash that doesn't two-frame. But this is Ike, aka Ganondorf Jr, aka all of his moves are strong. Neutral air into back air also kills Mario at around 73 on the ledge, which- I'm is always surprised to see how little distance neutral air used to send you. you miss it. By the way, remember when I said that down smash doesn't two frame? Well, that's because its hitbox is bad and does not hit anywhere below the ground Ike is standing on. I mean, just look at how thin that is. Yeah, I don't really get that. I swear to God, there's just different people working on different characters. You have to wait for him to do this tiny animation where he tries to pull himself up to even get a chance. And that's of course never going to happen. And then in the situations where it does happen, you would just use down tilt instead because it kill confirms into back air. I didn't have my mind changed about this one. The thing about down smashes is at the very minimum, the vast majority of them cover both sides of you and that's a valuable asset for a character to have. It can be useful when you're coming off the respawn platform, it can be useful if your opponent is in free fall and they're trying to mix up their drift. There's kind of a minimum floor where a lot of these moves at least do something. Ike's forward smash has so little use outside of being an extremely hard read and it's even a bit unreliable at that because of the sour spot aspect. Squirtle. I think I'm going to say forward smash. Out of all of his smash attacks, which I think are the only real candidates here, it's the slowest one and its coverage isn't nearly as good. For Squirtle, it's up smash. I think this up smash. Looks super cool, but that doesn't make it super cool. It's a pretty good it's anti-air though. It's never useful. It's super slow, has a lot of lag, especially for a Squirtle move. It's not good at catching landings because of how slow it is and its underwhelming hitbox. I don't know if I'd call its hitbox underwhelming. It doesn't quite match the animation, but the animation is freaking huge. And lastly, it's pretty weak for a smash attack, especially near the tip, making it even- Oh. Oh, I didn't realize the tipper was that weak. That's actually- Pretty valid. Yeah, okay, the fact that you can hit opponents up that high is the main benefit of the move because of how slow it is, and that's not really that much of a benefit at all. It's up smash. Even if it was stronger, it's generally not Squirtle's job to take stocks. That's Ifus or Charizard's job, because remember, they're a team. They're all equally important. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine for them to follow up after the fact, but we know where their priorities lie. Ivysaur. For everything this character does right, it's also got some really bad moves. Forward tilt's pretty garbage, not especially fast and insanely unsafe on shield. Down smash is super weak and I don't really know when you'd use it. And bullet seed's on the table too. Bullet seed does have a pretty decent anti-air reach if nothing else though. I'm gonna say down smash for this one. His worst move is his down smash. Yeah. 
It has okay range, but that's where the good ends. It's so weak. It doesn't weak. kill Mario on stage until well over 100%. Again, that coverage aspect is a bare minimum of the move, and charging this up fully while your opponent is maybe coming down from freefall, not an invalid use case, so it kind of depends on a character-by-character -character basis what else is competing with this sort of minimum floor for dance smashes, in addition to the properties of the dance smash itself. In Ivysaur's case, I think it lines up pretty well. It can two-frame, but come on. I don't even think I need to say why you should never- Down air. There we go. For Charizard, I think I'm going to say dash attack. It's kind of in the Bowser camp where, you know, it's just a regular old kind of poke your foot out and hit him dash attack, but I don't think he has any other obvious candidates. Charizard's worst move is up tilt. Yeah, up tilt. I think what he's going to say is it's outclassed by up smash. It almost combos, but it doesn't. But that's not what makes this move as bad as it is. In the tips section of Smash Ultimate, the following is stated. Charizard wing thrust, up tilt attack. Charizard's wings won't take damage, making this move good for overpowering foes who are attacking from above. This is a big fat lie. Using up tilt actually extends your hurtbox. Wait, what? Meaning that you can get hit by your wings during this move. Is Charizard's up tilt seriously not intangible? I always thought it was intangible. Okay, well, that is a bit of a problem then. Man, they really did Charizard dirty there. I completely bought into that move being intangible. That's disappointing. Here's a funny useful smash fact. You can actually see a character's hurt box in game in the training mode by setting invincibility to display and then grabbing a superstar. So we can see the- Oh, that's a good tip. I actually didn't know that. I'm going to use that. They actually extend upwards and increase in size accordingly. Ah, uh, gross. To be fair, they do shrink in size a little bit when Charizard is pulling his wings back, but that's not what they said in the tips. That's not said even close, no. That's the part of the move you're interested in. After. Also, this move has super low priority, meaning that it clanks with weaker moves and loses to stronger moves all the time. Why did they do that? This is just straight up dropping the ball. Charizard having his wings be intangible is the completely reasonable aspect of his design philosophy. You know, they're generally the moves that go up. So there's supposed to be anti-airs. Tons of anti-airs are intangible. Yuck. Okay, it's up tilt. Diddy. Diddy is tricky because he doesn't really have much in the way of awful moves to begin with, and a lot of them get way better because of synergy with Banana. Like Dam Smash, for example, right? There would be nothing special about it to begin with, but oh, what's that? It's frame five and you can use it in combination with a Banana Trip? Well, okay, suddenly it got a hell of a lot better. Same thing with Down Air. Like, oh, it's a completely run-of-the-mill spike, except it has Banana Peel setups. I think I'm going to say Down Smash just because the situations where you would go with it out of a banana peel toss instead of forward smash, which is also pretty quick, are, you know, somewhat limited. They do exist, but the distance that you would need to throw the peel from is kind of specific. Diddy Kong's worst move is forward tilt, and here's why. That move is better. Forward tilt two frames, and it's really good at it. Oh, okay, it was buff later in the game's life, though, which actually made its hitboxes bigger, so that's probably why it's so good at two-framing now. And it also lasts longer, too. Okay, okay, the move was actually made a really good two-framing tool after this video came out. Okay, for the time period, this is totally fair. Nowadays, no, absolutely not. Lucas. Lucas's toolkit is insane, for the record. I think his dash attack is pretty unspectacular, though. It doesn't go that far, and it's a bit slow. PK Freeze is on the list, too, but you do at least see Lucas players make good use of it occasionally, and you do see them throw it out regularly. Dash attack, I just don't really think there's much of a reason to use it. For Lucas, it's his jab. And not just his jab sucks, but his entire jab combo sucks. What? Its main problem is its hitbox, which is kind of pathetic. The first one just straight up What? Um... It'll miss jab locks too, especially near the tip of the attack. It's frame two. I know it's stubby. It's supposed to be stubby. It's frame two. As far as the missing jab locks thing, that hurts, but tons of jabs don't consistently jab lock. Now you can cancel jab one into jab two very fast, which means you could potentially always manually input jab twice really quick to remedy the short range issue a bit. However, that would mean you'd only hit the tip of jab two which does 1.8 damage. Jabs aren't really supposed to do damage, though. As some characters, it's a more staple part of their game plan, but usually it's just kind of a get-off-me tool. Frame 2 is a fantastic get-off-me option. Not only that, but if you don't hit jab 1, then hit jab 2, you're very likely to also miss jab 3, especially at higher percent, because this move is inconsistent as hell. But let's say you got all three hits in. Congratulations, you did a whopping 9%. Which is just as much Again, who cares? as the sour spot of forward tilt, 
and the sweet spot of forward tilt not only does more damage and has more range, but can also kill. Forward tilt is also frame 7 versus frame 2, and Lucas's forward tilt is ridiculous, don't get me wrong. And it got even more insane since this video was made, but I don't really know if you can compare them like that. Nah, not buying this one. Sonic. So the one that comes to mind immediately is Down Smash. He's so fast that you barely even need it for like tech chase stuff. Up tilt is pretty bad too. It barely combos, but you know, it does combo. It's very unsafe on shield, but the hitbox at least is fairly solid. You know, considering it's a complete Captain Falcon ripoff to this day, you'd kind of expect that. Yeah, I'll say Down Smash. Sonic's worst move is one of his six ball moves. Can you believe it? Oh wait, I didn't know we got a new dash attack in Ultimate. In Smash 4, it was another ball move. That's cool. <laughs> Anyways, his worst move in Ultimate is his up smash. It's pretty slow That's... and only decently strong, and on yeah. the platforms on competitively legal stages, it has trouble hitting correctly from below. He does get full body intangibility on it, so it is a reasonable anti-air, but the intangibility doesn't really last for that long. I don't know if it's enough to make up for how skinny and specific the hitbox is. I can see a pretty good argument for this one, honestly. Now here comes the good part of this move, because yes, there actually is some. First off, for some unknown reason, this move has a crazy rage skill. That is interesting. As far as I know, rage affects every move equally. I doubt there's a unique multiplier on this or anything like that. I'd guess that it's just the angle it sends out is very receptive to having its knockback boosted. That's not a bad asset to have. Without any rage, this move will kill Mario here with no DI starting at 112%. So that's pretty strong. At 75%, which is about half of max rage, it'll kill this Mario here starting at 101%. Hmm. And at max rage, aka 150%, it will kill Mario here as soon as 80%. Hold up, I'm not sure if I'm still on board with this. That is a really strong up smash. That is surprisingly strong. I feel like that might be enough to make up for some of its weaknesses. However, because this move is kinda laggy, you can't take much advantage of this rage skill since doing a laggy move like that at high. It is risky, is yes, dangerous. but the payoff does seem kinda worth the risk. Pass is that it basically will always shield poke an opponent if their shield isn't completely full, meaning that if Sonic hits you with any move first, he can almost always hit you- Oh, that's also good, I didn't know about that either. Yeah, not a terrible move, just his worst move. No, I've changed my mind, congratulations PJiggles, you've successfully talked me out of agreeing with you. King DDD, Gordo lead traps can definitely warp the way his kit works compared to how a lot of other characters would use his moves. I think forward smash remains pretty terrible though. Way too slow, has a huge sour spot on it. For the great king himself, it's a move most of you are probably not expecting, his forward smash. Yes, it's super strong. I was expecting it. Thing. It's super strong against opponents on the ground. It has a spike hitbox during its initial swing that is supposed to make aerial opponents get comboed into the strong hit. What but it doesn't it work. What does is basically guarantee that aerial opponents will get hit by the sound. Yeah, it's literally just not coded properly. Strong. It has a pretty huge shockwave hitbox, which doesn't kill at all, but it at least ensures your safety if you miss a strong hit. That's a nice it's aspect for nice. the move to have, but it's However, not enough. the shockwave doesn't come out until frame 44, one frame after the strong hitbox, meaning that most of the time people can just jump out of it and punish its end lag, which isn't gigantic, but it's still pretty sizable. Okay, so bottom line in Smash, these kind of moves always suck. Alamar, a lot of his moves change depending on the Pikmin he's using, but barely even matters because I'm going with Neutral Air, which is one of the moves that does not use Pikmin, and it's a pretty terrible neutral error as a result. Oh no, it's gonna be super hard to find out which is Olimar's worst move, right? Since he basically has five versions of every move? Nope, his worst move is forward tilt, which doesn't use a Pikmin. Uh, the startup is pretty slow, which is really the main issue here. Forward tilt kills though. Every other grounded move Olimar has that doesn't use a Pikmin is pretty fast. It kinda kills? I say kinda because 130 is way too high for Olimar. Seriously. I mean, yeah, you're not going to use it instead of his Pikmin moves, we but all, know that smash attacks are basically the all of his non-Pikmin moves are pretty bad. Forward tilt isn't even good if you're out of Pikmin, because to use it you need to be on the ground. And you can get all your Pikmins back so fast that it's faster to plug three Pikmins than to do one forward tilt. I guess one thing Forward Tilt has going for it is that it's Olimar's only kill option if you're playing Solomar. Which realistically is essentially never gonna happen, all you're gonna do is run away and pluck more Pikmin. Yeah, you know what, I'm convinced, they both suck, but I can see Forward Tilt sucking more. Lucario, Aura obviously plays a major role here. I think the moves that Aura affects less are like Jab and Forward Tilt. Yeah, I'm gonna say Jab, because it's only one frame faster than his Up Tilt, two frames faster than his Down Tilt, both of which let you do way more, and it has no payoff. You can be at max Aura with your opponent at really high percent, and it's 
still won't do anything. What do Lucario and Lucas have in common? Aside from the fact that their name both starts with L-U-C-A, and that they're both from an RPG, <laughs> and that they both joined Smash and Brawl, and that they're both Pokemon. That's right. Their jab sucks. Lucas's jab does not suck. I'm still arguing against that, but okay. Here, yeah, yeah, yeah. It never combos. Jab 1 and 2 have too much end leg each to be able to mix up and do anything else after them like Sheik can. Or even do kill. something on shield. Even with Max Aura, it won't kill until well over 200%. And at that point, characters will fall out of the full combo all the... Oh no, that's even worse than I thought. ...exactly as fast with just a little bit less range, which gives you way more reward. It can be used to jab lock, of course, but Lucario's jab lock isn't that good. His best true confirm out of a lock is his forward smash, which is a one frame window. If you're a frame too early, you'll just do another jab. And if you're a frame too late, the opponent will be able to get back up. No surprises there, as far as just overall utility for a jab, it is not good. Rob gets so much use out of like every single move in his kit. The only real exception I can think of is forward smash. It's pretty slow and it's got way too prominent a sour spot on it. For Rob, it's forward tilt. It's just... Forward tilt. Every other ground move Rob has is just so good. All smash attacks cover good range and kill. It's not a bad forward tilt though. Down throw for early percent combos. While it's not true anymore, jab into down tilt is still a decent fast option your opponent might not see coming and it may also get you a grab. And down tilt is... Insane. Well, down tilt. Yeah. This won't take long at all because you've heard it a million times by now. It doesn't kill. It doesn't combo. It has high end lag. It does nothing. It's not a bad Let's poke, though. Yeah, I don't think so. It's not the centerpiece of his kit or anything, but it's a perfectly functional run-back pivot option, for example, and you do see Rob Mains use it. Toon Link. His down air is pretty bad. I'm gonna say it's on the lower end of stall and fall aerials. His down tilt doesn't really do all that much either. It's pretty safe on shield, but it doesn't go that far and it doesn't have much payoff. But I think it's still at least a passable neutral tool just because at least it's safe. Yeah, I'm gonna say down air. For Toon Link, it's down smash. And it's Man, these down smashes are just like whack-a-mole. I have so no so idea where they're gonna pop up. Comical. Watch this. <clears throat> Grounded spin attack kills at basically the same percent and hits on both sides way faster, and is a better option out of a parry since it hits higher and lasts longer. That's it. Okay, I'll go into a little more detail. This is the same argument I made for the other links. About it compared to spin attack, it's pretty good at two framing, but so is forward tilt, which sends you at a weird low angle, so it'll mess up a lot of recoveries. Especially since getting two frames takes Yeah, but down smash double. kills. Also, one thing that's interesting is that the back hit is a lot stronger, meaning it'll actually kill quite early. So yeah, definitely not a bad move. It's just that grounded spin attack and forward tilt do its job way better. So the one link where I don't make this argument is the one link where it actually pops up in the video, okay. And it's also the one I agree with the least, I would still say down air. Wolf. He's got a surprisingly unreliable jab, but you know, it's not that slow and it's got a bit of a disjoint on it. Down air is kind of underwhelming too. I think I would say down air for this one is pretty slow, not particularly strong. It kind of says something that even though Wolf has just that ridiculous air mobility, you still don't really see Wolf players use that in neutral very much. For the final brawl character and and space animal. His worst move is jab. Wow, how original. Its hitbox is oh no, oh no. Yeah, that's not looking good. It doesn't match the animation at all, which is a huge shame, but if you took those particle effects away and you just look at the actual hitbox, it's not that bad. And if you somehow manage to land the second hit, but not the first, then that's all you're gonna get because the third hit will almost never hit in yeah. that scenario. Now that might not seem as bad, However, pretty much every other move in Wolf's kit has more range, which include up smash, down smash, forward smash, dash attack, down tilt, forward air, the initial stab hitbox of neutral special, and forward tilt. I guess I just don't really agree with this philosophy so much because jabs aren't really supposed to do a lot of this kind of stuff. All it's supposed to do is be your fastest close quarter tool for most characters, and Wolf's is frame 4, that's not that slow. It's not great, but it is faster than any of these moves with more range, and that does mean you are going to use it sometimes. Villager, I don't really even know what Villager's down tilt is supposed to do. Like, it's not fast, it's not safe on shield, its payoff is just kind of whatever. For Villager, it's a move that visually looks like it would be pretty useless. Here's up tilt. I mean, up tilt, um... In Smash 4, this move used to hit behind Villager pretty well, and it had some decent kill power behind it. Now in Ultimate, 
Not only is the hitbox behind Villager a waste, yeah, that does suck, but it also doesn't kill nearly as well anymore. It's certainly worse, but you still do use it for the same kind of situations you used it for in Smash 4. Down tilt, I really don't see much of a purpose behind at all. If you try to catch landings with it, which up tilts are usually supposed to be good at, characters will often get hit by the first hit and not the second hit meaning the opponent can quickly go down and punish you. Up till it got buffed pretty significantly after this video was made, it got invincibility on Villager's head and arm, and it also gained an additional hit stun modifier so it connects more reliably into the second hit. Yeah, I've been trying to get it to whiff for a while now and I can't. I'm sure it still will from time to time. Basically any multi-hit move will, but that was the main thing making me agree with the video. And since it's been patched, I would say no, I would still give it to down tilt. Mega Man. The only move of his that I don't really get the point of is dash attack. Not really that much payoff, not particularly safe, even though it can cross up. Doesn't really go all that far or travel that fast. All right, for Mega Man, we're counting jab, forward tilt, and nair as the same move. No, there's no way though. Dash attack, though, e not okay, yeah, no, it's not the lemons. One gigantic issue. It's on a zoner. Missing it means you will get punished. Not only because of its big end lag, but also because it's a dash attack. Meaning that using it puts you closer to your opponent. Unless you do it away from your opponent, which... Why would you do that? No. If you land all the hits, it actually does decent damage for a dash attack. But that's only if you get all the hits in. Which won't be often especially since airborne opponents will almost always fall out of it. Yeah, and catching landings with dash attack is a pretty common use case for them, so that is certainly a problem. If you're rushing in with Mega Man anyways, you're better off going for down tilt, or landing with forward air. I'm completely on board with all of that. We Fit Trainer has some weird moves. Forward air seems super specific though, like too specific. Yeah, I'm gonna go with forward air, certainly doesn't seem to be a staple move in We Fit Trainer's kit. Very weird character to evaluate. For We Fit Trainer, it's down smash. Down smash. Its main purpose Another is to down set your smash. flying fast and low. But there are other moves that do that, like jab 2 for instance. It's not safe on shield while down tilt is. And although it has decent kill power, forward smash is not only stronger, but a little bit faster too. I think when you consider the fact that We Fit Trainer has other moves that hit on both sides of them too, yeah, okay. Rosalina's a really hard one because you need to factor in Luma's kit too. Looking through her moveset, she honestly gets pretty decent use out of a lot of her kit. The one that's sticking out to me most is Up Tilt, just because in most neutral and anti-air situations you would pull out Up Smash instead. For these two, it's kind of a weird case because it's two characters in one at the same time with a different moveset. So when I joined the Rosalina Discord, I asked for her worst move and their worst move when they're both together. Oh, okay. Rosalina's worst move is her up tilt. Yeah. It's not bad, but it cannot hit standing opponents at all. And I mean at all. Meaning its only use is catching landings and hitting opponents standing on a platform. But use up smash but up instead. Tilt doesn't kill very well. So most of the time it's better to just chase opponents and try to kill them with her up air. Up air. Because yeah, that that's fine too. Does kill pretty well. Up smash is only one frame slower, and a million times better. Her up and smash is actually kind of nuts. On platforms, by the way. Now for both of them together, it's Luma's up air. Its main problem is that it often combos into the sour spot of Rosalina's up air. Okay, I'll take the W I got. There's no way I would have called this. I don't think it's reasonable to expect to have been able to call this. Little Mac, it's gonna be one of his aerials. The question is kind of just which aerial is it? Neutral air is out of the picture. You actually get some combo setups off of that one, and it's also frame two, so it at least works as a combo breaker. Danner you also use for recovery purposes, and it can jab lock. Up air, you do actually see it used just a little bit for safe pressure in situations where nothing else would really work. So it basically comes down to forward air or back air. Note of the two of them, forward air is a little bit weaker, but that's like asking which Paul brother seems like less of a tool. Neither of these are realistically going to be killing anyone, and forward air comes out a little bit quicker, and it's got a bit better coverage, so back air. For Little Mac, you already know it's going to be one of his aerials. Huge surprise, they're all garbage. So because of that, we're going to do something special. We're naming his worst aerial and his worst non-aerial move. Okay. How exciting. I actually did a similar thing with my worst of every move video, because obviously Little Mac swept every aerial category. So I spent a lot of time focusing on the runner-ups as well. The worst move in his entire moveset would be his back air. There you go. It's the slowest out of all his aerials, which is the case for a lot of characters because back airs usually have a lot of kill power. This Not is also Mac. The case for Little Mac. 
I mean, this move kills Mario here as soon as 219%. Yeah, never mind. This move is so slow that if you do two back airs off stage after a full hop, you can just barely make it back if you time everything perfectly. As I often have Little Mac players point out whenever I rag on his aerials in a video, Yes, they do have some use cases, except for back air, which you just basically don't use under any circumstances. Okay, so his worst aerial is back air, but what about his worst ground move? I'm not gonna bother guessing on this one because I know he got some substantial upgrades to his ground moves after this video was made, let's just see. It was actually kinda hard to figure out, since basically all of his ground moves are pretty good. However, after discussing it with the Little Mac Discord, we were able to agree that his up tilt is his worst grounded move. At early percents, it's negative on hit, meaning the opponent can hit you before moving again. It can combo into up special, but not at early percentages or at percentages where it would actually kill. And it's also a little DI-able, making it even harder to combo with it. This is specifically why I didn't want to try and guess, because up tilt got massively buffed later on. More hits done, better knockback, additional combos all around, the move is just so much better than it used to be. Greninja, I'm gonna say substitute, it's just kind of a situational counter that's not very good at killing. His worst move is Shadow Sneak. This move is Shadow a sneak. gimmick and you know it, a cool ninja move. It's Anyways, a good recovery it's tool though. And reactable because of the shadow on the ground, literally- Yeah, this sucks. It's pretty strong, so it can kill, but Greninja has no shortage of strong kill confirms, so you shouldn't really rely on side special for taking stocks. That's fair. Again, though, there's the recovery element, and because of that, you see Greninja players use this way more often than they ever use Substitute, so... Yeah, I don't think so. The Miis. There's a lot to bite off here. Me Brawler. Maybe Exploding Sidekick. That's basically Falcon Punch, except it's Falcon Punch that's insanely safe on shield, so it's actually a hell of a lot better than Falcon Punch is. Onslaught, a pretty impractical burst movement option, but it does hit like a truck. I'm gonna say Exploding Sidekick, just because you really shouldn't expect to be ever actually landing that move. This worst move is Exploding Sidekick. Remember everything I said about Falcon Punch being bad? Yeah, just apply all that to this move, as it's basically the same, but with super armor and it's a little bit faster. I actually completely forgot about the super armor, so it's faster, has super armor, and is incredibly safe on shield, so it's certainly a hell of a lot better than Falcon Punch. Doesn't make it a good move. I agree with the choice, but it could be worse. Uh, Sword Fighter. His jab is pretty bad. Frame 6 and he's got a really stubby sword. I think it's gotta be Blurring Blade though, right? Really slow, very specific, pretty small hitbox that's easy to whiff on, and the payoff isn't even really that good in comparison to some of these other power moves. I really don't know why anyone would use this. Me Sword Fighter's worst move is Gale Stab, one of his side specials. Gale Stab. Its only use is using it as an aerial burst option, even though it does put you in free fall. I'm not gonna say Gale Stab is an amazing move, but it's not an unreasonable pick necessarily. You wouldn't use it because Chakram, I think, is just massively outclassing it. But it's kind of budget Ike Quick Draw, and Ike Quick Draw is not a bad move. It even has a little bit of synergy with Shuriken of Light, and I think recently some sword fighters I've heard have actually started experimenting with that move set more. If you hit with this, me sword fighter will keep his momentum, but he won't be able to grab ledges for a short while, which means you can let yourself get hit if he tries to use it to recover. Even fully charged, it only does 22 damage which you can match with even a simple combo. And it's only kind of good at killing if it's fully charged, which you're of course not gonna land as often. Okay, but it is a move that extends your burst range, and especially for me, Sword Fighter, who's an unusually zoning heavy character for a Sword Fighter, that means your opponent's likely gonna be jumping a lot, so this is actually a pretty decent landing catcher. Chakram is a way better side special which can also combo into Power Thrust, which is a move similar to Gill Stab, but better. Yeah, I'm not on board with this one, and if you want to include the moves competing with each other angle, then his neutral special is actually up against even heavier competition. Me Gunner... Down Air I know is like quite bad on Me Gunner. I'm gonna say Down Air. Me Gunner's worst move is Down Air. There you go. Not a special this time. It's slow, laggy, it can spike, but its sweet spot is really hard to hit because of Me Gunner's terrible aerial momentum and the sour spot sucks. It's also just not a good sweet spot in general. Palutena, her weaknesses tend to be her ground moves. She does have a pretty bad counter as well, although it does have the reflective property on it, so I think that probably takes it out of contention. Down smash, the main thing I can think to do with it would be tech chasing, but Palutena isn't really a tech chase character. She does get some tech chase stuff, obviously, but it's just so much less risky to go for other stuff. If you guess wrong, this move is so laggy and its startup is not that great either. Her worst move is neutral tilt. It's kinda slow. Neutral tilt? I say kinda because it's frame 8, which for a neutral tilt, yeah, that's slow. Have I ever heard Jab being called neutral tilt? I honestly don't think I have. Even Bowser's end tilt is faster.
Okay, I'm sorry, I won't refer to all Japs in this video as neutral. F**k you, P Jiggles. But yeah, even Bowser's big beefy jab is faster. Up tilt comes out just as fast, and dash attack comes out faster. But most importantly, standing grab comes out of frame faster. And in case you don't know, Pelotena's grab range is really, really stupid. Did get nerfed a little bit later on, but it's still good, and back then, yeah, it was pretty stupid. She's basically like Melee Marth in that aspect. Rapid jab can kill at ledge, but so can forward tilt, and a lot sooner at that. Jab's a bit of an interesting choice because I agree on paper it's a pretty underwhelming jab, especially compared to Smash 4 since it lost all of the jab cancel stuff. But it is a move that you see Palutena players use fairly regularly, even at top level, just because you kind of have to. She doesn't have great grounded moves. That's a bit of a meta development over time thing. I disagree with the choice, but I see where they're coming from. Pac-Man. This has to be up tilt, right? Up tilt essentially just works as an anti-air with someone who's directly above you. The hitbox does absolutely nothing else for him. For Pac-Man, it's down tilt with a very funky looking hitbox. Uh, Again, not a bad move, but yeah, you know. It comes out fast and has decent range, which is nice. It's got pretty good range. Frame 7 startup, minus 13 on shield, those aren't horrible numbers, especially since you get pulled back so far after using it. But it doesn't combo and it definitely doesn't kill. So it's just a poke in the neutral. Okay, that solo move really needs to be. Forward air can also be a good get off me tool being only one frame slower from the ground and one frame faster in terms of end lag. Keep in mind that Pac-Man is definitely able to keep opponents at a distance, so if you're really playing to Pac-Man's strengths, you shouldn't have to use a get off me tool. I think the bigger argument here would just be use neutral air instead. Frame 3 start up negative 3 on shield by the way, Pac-Man is a zoner, I don't know if I mentioned that. So in short, it's just a little outclass, but again not a bad move. Exactly, it's not a bad move and up tilt is so maybe my brain is just not big enough to comprehend the intricacies of pac-man but i do not get this at all robin so i guess i need to factor in the leaven sword and his tomes in addition to the bronze sword so it should probably be a move that never uses any resources up tilt very standard anti-air but it is an anti-air and you can do some mild combos with it down tilt again kind of doing the bare minimum a down tilt is supposed to do which is throw out a quick disjointed hitbox that's reasonably safe on shield good enough dash attack and forward tilt are both honestly pretty bad. Dash attack, it is quick enough to be at least somewhat of a reasonable instant dash attack option. It's also a little bit of a lingering hitbox, not saying any of this makes it good. Again, it's a terrible dash attack, but forward tilt it always seems like they're using it reluctantly if they have to use it at all. I'm gonna say forward tilt. Basically, every sword move that Robin has is garbage. Lucky for Robin, his sword moves get powered up if he has his Leffen sword, in which case they do good damage, crazy knockback, eat shields and have bigger hitboxes. Yeah, the Leaven Sword itself isn't enough to make up for all of Robin's weaknesses. The fact that you don't always have access to it isn't really, I guess, that big a deal. You have access to it for the majority of the match, but in a vacuum, like on a character with better mobility, essentially every Leaven Sword move is significantly above average. Robin basically doesn't have tilts, because all of them suck. However, the worst of his tilts would definitely be his forward tilt. Yeah. This move has so much knockback at low percent that it'll never combo into anything ever but at the same time, it also doesn't have any kill potential either. If you really need to do a run back turnaround pivot tilt, Robin will occasionally have to do that, but even then, their mobility is so low that they can't really make great use of it. It's just kind of a move they have to do sometimes because there's no real substitute. Pivot Leaven Sword forward smash is a lot slower and you can't even always do it. And even though it's quicker than forward smash, it's frame 9, which is on par with the frame data of other sword forward tilts, but the damage and knockback, and most importantly, the range of it, which is what gives a sword forward tilt its utility, is not even close. One niche this move has is that it sends characters into tumble at very low percents, meaning that it can get you a tech situation. Yeah, but Robin's However, not a tech chase character. Tech away, the only true follow-up he has is Thoron because of his bad mobility. And this is assuming he has Thoron charged up while landing a forward tilt at around 4%. Yeah, that's not awful damage, but it's damage that's comparable to a lot of characters just regular early percent combos, and it uses up a lot of resources under specific circumstances, and Robin players often don't have Thoron charged up, certainly not at lower percents like that. Shulk. He's got one of the weaker jabs in the game for sure. Frame 5, and it's very unsafe on shield by jab standards, and it's not that reliable. But his down smash, like, it might catch someone off guard who doesn't know how to deal with it, but if you know that you can just freely punish Shulk when he's still stuck in the rest of the animation, it makes the move 
borderline unusable. I guess the extra hitboxes can be a little bit nice in terms of just maybe, you know, catching some additional tech chase scenarios or something like that where your timing's a little bit off. I don't think that's anywhere near enough to make up for it. For Shulk, it's his jab. I personally consider Shulk's that's fair. to be the best move in the game. Even if you disagree, you gotta at least agree that it's up there. Yes. What do I think the literal best move is in the game? It may honestly be Steve's block, but Monado Arts are definitely a candidate. The full combo's damage output is very weak. Even in Buster mode, it'll do less than one down tilt. It also can't combo, even in Buster. Its kill power is also not great. Even in Smash mode, it doesn't kill at 130%. Now, 130% might seem okay to some? But in Smash mode, that's absolutely pathetic. None of this really matters that much. The things that do matter are that it's tiny and it's slow. However, its biggest issue is by far its hitbox. Good god is it bad. <laughs> yeah. It's also very unsafe on shields. It's Shulk's fastest move, but that doesn't really matter with a hitbox that bad because all of Shulk's other moves have an insane hitbox. Dance Smash and Jab are both some of the worst in their respective categories in the entire game. Jab, I actually think, is totally fine because Shulk is a character that might rely on his jab, right? He's a huge sword character, which means he's got huge sword frame data. His close quarters game is really lacking. Jab is the only move that might shore that up and it does not shore it up at all. Bowser Jr. Cannonball, the move does a little bit more than some people necessarily give it credit for, but my opinion of it has honestly gone down a bit over time because if you look at the best Bowser Jr. players, they really don't use the move all that much. It's generally only in very specific situations. If you actually have the space to throw it out, a lot of the time you'd rather be using that to set up a Mecha Koopa or a Clown Cart Dash. It's just too niche. It's down smash. It has down a smash. lot of ending lag, even for a smash attack. It's only active for three frames. Again, the down smash and thing. It doesn't have a shockwave hitbox, like you might expect. Its kill power is not particularly great. That's not bad for a down smash, though. I'm not saying it's great or that it does anything besides the bare minimum hit both sides thing, but as we keep having to come back to, that's a valid use case. Sport Smash is quite a bit stronger and has a little less lag. All yeah, but it doesn't hit on both sides. Bit of startup time. I might be willing to accept Dance Smash just because you essentially never see Bowser Jr. mains use it, but it's still a perfectly functional Dance Smash, and Cannonball is one of the weakest neutral specials in the game. Eh, Duck Hunt. I kind of want to say Duck Jump, their up special, but it's gotten way better in Ultimate where you can cancel out of it, and you can sort of use the Trick Shot to cover yourself. I know you don't see a lot of Duck Hunts around, but from what I have seen of them, they don't get edge guarded nearly as often as you'd think they would. This one's honestly pretty hard. I think I might go with Dash Attack just because it really doesn't have much payoff, and it's not that quick or disjointed or doesn't send you all that far. Like, it doesn't really have anything going for it. For Duck Hunt Duo, it's down here. It's slow, pretty damn weak for a spike, and if you're moving just a little bit too much while using it, only the first hit will connect. Okay, but the hitbox is really big and it lasts for a long time though. This is not really a move that was on my radar. Like as far as trying to connect spikes near the ledge goes, this is not particularly inconsistent. Its hitbox is a bit inconsistent because of the multi-hit, but it's not that much worse than a lot of spikes. And the trade-off, again, is that it lingers a long time, so the timing is more lenient. It really doesn't seem that difficult to connect with consistently. I'm not a Duck Hunt player, I could be overlooking something on this one, but I didn't have strong convictions about a lot of Duck Hunt's moves, but this seems like a bit of a weird pick to me. I've been sitting here looking at Ryu and Ken for a while. This one is rough. If you don't play these characters, they're a bit on the difficult side to evaluate. I think I'm going to go with Heavy Up Tilt. This move just doesn't really seem to have that much of a point to me. It does combo into their Shoryukens at earlier percents, but at later percents when those moves actually start killing, it's nowhere close, and it's not a good kill move itself. So outside of very early percents, I don't really know why you would go for this thing. You're stuck in a lot of lag if you don't cancel it into a special move as well. I could be wrong on this one, but I just don't really see the use of these. So far, every Echo character had the same worst move as their non-Echo counterpart. I was expecting Ryu and Ken to have a different worst move, since they both have a lot of moves that the other Shoto doesn't have. But nope, they share the exact same worst move. Once I tell you what it is, I'm sure you won't be surprised. It is Jab 3. Specifically, that's yeah. cheating. Come on, that's cheating. All right, that makes sense. Here's why it's their worst move. Uh huh. I know. I know. Special canceling. Anything else?
Okay. Cloud. All of his aerials are good. All of his special moves are good. Oh, you know what? Finishing Touch. Finishing Touch does have some combos into it, but it's really rare to see someone actually go for it. Finding any footage of Finishing Touch whatsoever was actually really hard. I know you can get some really cheesy stuff with it, but it's so rare. It's really risky to go for. For Cloud, his worst move is Jab. I did consider bad. saying Jab. It's not Cloud a terrible Jab, but he doesn't them. really like have a lot of use for it. Cross Slash which both have more range and do more damage, especially cross slash if you have limit. It's frame four, which is the same as Wolf's that we talked about. So you can kind of say, oh, at least it's a jab. He's got that going for him. But this one is really unsafe and Cloud is way better at spacing himself on the ground. And Uppy is a decent substitute in close quarters, even if it is a bit slower. Corrin, counter surge. It's got the same incredibly specific restrictions that essentially any counter does. And on top of that, it's not even good if you land it. So I'm going to say counter surge. For Corrin, it's his awkward looking down smash. Mmm, I'm... no. No, I don't think so. It's again a minimally functional down smash, and tipper down smash is like stupidly strong. I guess you could use it if you're not sure what side of you the opponent will land. It's kind of funny that it's taken this long to acknowledge that aspect of down smash. But instead of doing that, you could also just catch her landing with the long range of up air or up tilt. Those don't really kill a ground level though, that's kind of the issue. I disagree with this one. It's not a good down smash, but I don't think it's particularly dysfunctional either. Bayonetta forward tilt. It's gotten a little bit better through patches, it does combo into her her forward air at low percents now, but it's still one of the slower forward tilts in the game and incredibly unreliable to actually connect with and really unsafe and doesn't have a disjoint on it. It's her forward tilt. It's just not very mm -hmm. remarkable at all. Its damage output is pretty alright, but it's not more than jab, which is also faster and safer. It doesn't combo and it also doesn't kill. It does it's kill a little bit, but, or it does combo a little bit now. Tilt which is also faster and sets up for combos better. Down tilt 100% outclasses it in basically every way, that is true. Again, forward tilt isn't horrible, but there's just plenty of moves that do its job better. I disagree with that, actually. I think that forward tilt is a pretty horrible move. Inkling has a surprising amount of moves that are just kind of okay. You got forward tilt, you got dash attack. I think down air, though, it's only active for two frames, and it's really slow to start up. You essentially never see Inklings connect with this thing. And now we're finally at the ultimate newcomers. Starting, of course, with Inkling whose worst move is up tilt. You probably already know this, up but Inkling's aerials are amazing. Up air is combos and kills, forward air is super strong in combos, back air is really stupid, Downer isn't great, but it spikes. Lots of downer spike, though. It's one of the worst spiking downers in the game. All of these moves can, of course, be done out of a short hop, and most of them heavily outshine up tilt, such as neutral air, back air, and up air. Neutral air is a way better anti-air, because it even hits a little bit above Inkling's legs. The only true combo I was able to find was its back hit into up air at very specific percents. But you can DI that. It is true, it's not a great combo starter. Some of that has more to do with Inkling's frame data on up air in particular not being that great, but it is a very quick just throw it out anti-air. I was told that the only time Inkling mains use up tilt is when they miss input up smash, which I thought was pretty funny. Look, I'm not saying that Inkling players are constantly spamming up tilt, but I don't know. I think Danner's still worse. Ridley, that's gonna be a skewer. I know you can do some tech chase stuff with it, but use up smash instead. He's got one of the worst Danners in the game in addition to one of the worst Danners specials in the game, but I think there are way more use cases for down air. For Ridley, it's down air. First no. All, look at that hitbox. The hitbox sucks, this but it's skewer. One of the saddest hitboxes I've ever seen. I mean, look at how small the sweet spot is compared to the sour spot. It's a bad hitbox. It's a bad down air. It still does more than skewer does. I'll listen to the argument, but I'm pretty convinced on this one. Yeah, it can spike but only at the beginning, as you just saw, and just barely. That's not really why you use it. It's aimed downwards, although it's a bit slower, has a way bigger hitbox, it spikes all the way throughout the move, it's stronger, and if you do it at the right spot, Ridley will grab the ledge after it. That's one of those setups where it's not great, but it's better than it looks like it should be, right? It looks like a total gimmick. In reality, you do see it work out from time to time. Back to down air. The landing lag is really bad, and although it's possible, it's slow and hard to make it back to the stage after using down air in a real match. 
I mean, it's easy in training mode, but not in the heat of battle. I don't necessarily think that's valid. If you can do it in training mode, you can do it in the heat of battle. The difference is practice. We're not even going to mention Skewer anywhere in the list. Skewer sucks. I know it was nerfed after this video, so you couldn't do a down throw or something like that into a hard read with a Skewer, but that's the kind of thing that was going to catch an opponent who had never been hit by it in their life like one time. After that, you would just jump out of down throw and it would never work again. Skewer is essentially 100% a gimmick. You can use it while you're falling past the ledge. You can use it for some really specific gambly tech chases on platforms. I don't care about any of that. Just use other much more reliable stuff instead. Danner, you can use it to force your way out of a juggle. You can use it to descend down faster off stage to avoid certain projectiles or something like that. All stall and fall Danners have at least a little bit of potential because of footstool outer shield stuff and really doesn't really have great outer shield options otherwise. It's a terrible Danner, but nothing makes me think that it has less utility than Skewer does. Simon and Richter. If the hold jab counts, it's definitely the hold jab. It's so pointless you wonder why they even bothered. If not, their base jab jab is still pretty bad. Frame 5, not very long ranged, not very much payoff. Actually, yeah, there aren't really a lot of other great candidates for them. I'm gonna say jab either way. It's Simon and Richter's whip dangle. So this does yes. count. Even rollout is better. <laughs> though not by much. This move is so bad that it doesn't even have an official name, and its hitbox isn't available online. Or at least I couldn't find it. Okay, kudos to ultimateframedata.com. This move's hitbox is now available online. Perfectly acceptable hitbox for the record. Move still sucks though. Does this move kill? Hell no it doesn't. Is the damage output nice? Hell no it no. doesn't. Does it combo? Hell no it does not. You're able to do this move out of forward tilt or jab by holding down the A button, but even then it doesn't combo. It can block weak projectiles, but it's not very good at it. You know what else you can do against weak projectiles? That's right, <laughs> just shield it. Or you can throw out the cross, or you can chuck an axe over it, or you can jump forward and do downward angled forward air. Again, this move is so bad that you can't really think of it as anything besides an easter egg. It doesn't seem like the effort put into programming it was actually worth it. It's a reference to 1991's Super Castlevania 4 on the SNES. In that game, Simon Belmont was able to hold down the whip button and swing it around too. Bring that into Smash and it might do something. Probably still wouldn't even do that much though. By the way, they took the time to add in an ultra specific little reference like that, but they couldn't program Richter's holy water to move along the ground, they couldn't make the uppercuts go different distances, seriously. But then it was actually good because it had the same range as your current whip, and its hitbox was always active, whether you were swinging it or not. <laughs> okay, that's a bit much. If it worked like that in Smash, it would be an even more nightmarish version of Ness's down smash at the ledge. Let's let's not bring that in, but we could do a bit better than what we got. And now I'm obligated to talk about Sheik's chain in Melee, because it was very similar. But that move had crazy range and could rack up insane damage, so it was actually kinda useful. If we're being honest, it was still a bit more of a gimmick than anything else, but it did have at least some valid use for it. Kinky rule, I can't really think of a lot I would put here besides up smash. If you're gonna anti-air, I don't really know why you're not using up tilt or up air instead, and the same really applies if you're chasing someone below a platform. It can hit opponents on the ground afterwards too, but there are so many other moves you'd rather be using to do that. King K. Rule's worst move is his forward smash. Forward smash? Forward smash does exactly what a forward smash is supposed to do and not a thing more. Let's see. Its hitbox leaves something to be desired and it's only active for two frames, while being pretty laggy. That did get fixed in the very final Smash Ultimate patch, it lasts a frame longer now and the sweet spot's also a little bit bigger. Not huge changes and this was already kind of a beast if it connected to begin with, but worth knowing. But its biggest problem is easily that down smash heavily outshines it. That is true. King K. Rool jumps over attacks, its shockwave hitbox reaches further than forward smash, it comes out only three frames slower, and it even has belly armor starting at frame 8. It's not even that much worse at killing. All of that's totally fair. You absolutely see King K rule mains go for down smash instead of forward smash as they should. You also see them go for it instead of up smash though. We're talking if a character's on the ground. If they're in the air or on a platform, it would be up air. You know, I guess up smash does kill out of down air earlier than up air does, like a decent amount earlier. And King K rule players actually do use down air fairly regularly. Yeah, okay. Isabel's got essentially the same, just completely mediocre down tilt as villagers. For Isabel, it's down tilt. It's mainly just outclassed by forward tilt, which has basically the exact same range, except at that point you'd hit the sour spot of down tilt, whereas forward tilt is strong throughout the entire hitbox. It's one frame faster and can kill around the same percent at the ledge as down tilt. Killing off the top is generally better than killing off the side, right, because it's position independent, but I wouldn't say it's enough to make up for that. You'd have to run away before trying to zone after down tilt, which isn't always good. It can kinda shield poke, but not super well. No. 
This would probably also be Villager's worst move if he didn't have his up tilt. Okay, there you go. It's official. Villager got his up tilt buffed. They both have down tilt. Moving on. Incineroar. Incineroar's moveset is insane. The only reason he's not an incredible character is because of his mobility. I know his downer is not the most reliable among them, but it's reasonably safe on shield and combo starts for a very long time. I guess I'm just gonna have to say Jab. It's frame 5, which is not particularly fast for a brawler character. You know, his down tilt is frame 9, forward tilt's frame 12, so he'd probably appreciate having a slightly faster grounded tool. Even then, though, Darkest Lariat's the same frame, and that move also has invincibility on it, so it's not really that big a deal. You can just throw that out in close quarters situations. I can't think of what else it would possibly be, but it's not even that bad a jab. Okay, next up is Incineroar, who is a very special case as none of his moves are bad. Now, of course, I've already covered plenty of other characters that don't have a bad move. I don't think Snake and Pac-Man are the best examples, though, because I would argue that Snake's forward air and Pac-Man's up tilt are truly just bad. Like, legitimately bad, some of the worst of their categories. But Incineroar goes even beyond that. The reason for this lies in his down special, Revenge. Every single oh, I see the angle he's coming from. Boosted by the effect of that, that's actually pretty Except reasonable. It's the same thing I said with Diddy, right? Like, Banana magically makes a bunch of his moves better. Incineroar Revenge, you can connect essentially any move, and it's at least solid if you've got Revenge online, which is not that hard to do. For now, just know that his least useful move is Jab. Yeah. It lacks range, it doesn't kill, and characters will almost always fall out at the ledge at higher percent. It's one of the worst moves to use Revenge with, too. Darkest Laird is usually a better option. Now, knowing all this, why is Jab not bad? Well, if Incineroar has revenge and lands a Jab, it boosts every single hit, and at full power revenge, Jab is a frame 5 move with little end lag that does 43 damage. The damage boost revenge gives is obviously very good, I would say the kill power is the bigger benefit though. Darkest Lariat also comes out on frame 5 and does more damage, but it leaves you open way more if you miss it, and in case you don't know, if you grab Incineroar, he loses revenge. Yeah. Now hold on, you may be thinking, why isn't the filled version of Alolan Whip his worst move? That move is clearly useless. I know what he's gonna say here, it's definitely not useless. You're right, it's not good, but I'm not counting that because that's still a Lolan Whip. It's the same move as this. Which no sane person would call his worst move. Okay, that's actually not the direction I was expecting this to go, and I would actually argue that if you can say something like Samus's homing missile versus her super missile are two separate moves, then you can say the different stages of Alolan whip count too. Interpretation issue though, in any case, the reason I would say that is because you actually see Incineroar players use the sour Alolan whip fairly often because it gets your opponent off stage. So it's an advantage creator that comes off of a long-ranged command grab. Piranha Plant. If footstool attack counts, it's footstool attack. If not, I guess down air? It's reasonably fast as far as down air spikes go, but the spike hitbox actually still isn't that easy to connect. Did you know that if you footstool Piranha Plant while he's crouching, he will bite you? Yeah! Isn't that cool? It's also his worst move! Outside of his unique footstool attack, Piranha Plant doesn't have a clear worst move, because all of his moves are equally as ineffective. <laughs> Bit of a low blow, I don't know if it's necessarily untrue though. Piranha Plant got buffed over the course of the game. Still not a great character, definitely a lot worse earlier on. But of course, if Footstool Attack is on the table, it's clearly Footstool Attack. It's not even a contest. Now, of course, the biggest problem is it relies on people footstooling you on the ground while you are crouching. So it's very much out of your control. But even if all the planets align and someone footstools you while crouching, it's not guaranteed to hit. This is another one of these moves that's essentially an easter egg, but I'm way more on board with this one. Like, if there's nothing inherently funny about something like Simon and Richter's whip dangle, right? It's just a really bad move. This is funny, and it's very flavorful. It's very much in line with Piranha Plant's overall design philosophy of don't land on top of them, which is taken directly out of the Mario games. Every single character can air dodge before they get hit. Even Bayonetta, who has the slowest air dodge in the game. I did not know that. That makes the move now worse, but who cares? And even then, quite a few characters can do something better instead of air dodge, and sometimes that something completely destroys Piranha Plant. All of this info comes from a Google Doc made by iDonuts, who will be linked in the description along with his Google Doc. Why though? <laughs> Look at it because it's one of the funniest things I've ever read. Oh my okay, god, why? Better than Simon and Richter's whip dangle. Well, it kills at around 230%. I would say no, that move is not better than Simon and Richter's Whip Dangle. Not that it particularly matters, because these moves are both, like, 
absolute bottom of the barrel garbage, but at the very least, Whip Tangle does not actively ask your opponent to cooperate with you, so no, I would not say that being able to kill at 230% is enough to make this move better. Joker. Another rough one since I need to factor our sin into the picture for everything. Also, Joker is just broken. Funny enough, I think I'm going to say a move that Joker only gets when he has access to Arsene, and that's Wings of Rebellion. With Arsene active, essentially every single move that Joker has becomes one of the best of that move in the game, except for Up Special, which probably actually gets worse. It's pretty easy to two-frame and generally intercept, and you also lose access to chasing aerial opponents with a grappling hook. He's definitely another case where the character has no bad moves, but Joker's least useful move is Jab. It's best uses for jab locks, but jab locks aren't super good with Joker because most of the time if you're in a position where you can lock someone, it's because you hit them with a drag down first hit of forward air in which case you can just forward smash without locking them. The thing about that particular setup though is it's a lot more committal. If you just immediately go for the forward smash and it turns out your opponent did tech, you're potentially leaving yourself vulnerable. If you jabbed instead, you can still go for the forward smash afterwards or some other follow up, but you haven't left yourself anywhere near as open. Gun can do so too. Although if you use gun, you can only get down smash out of it because forward smash is too slow and up smash doesn't hit ground at opponents. And even then, if the opponent is at too high percent, gun will knock them back on their feet. So jab would be better in that scenario. So yeah, say it with me because this is the last time we're hearing it in this series. Not a bad move but his worst for sure. Okay, but it's also frame four, has pretty solid range, including a bit of a disjoint, and if you combine it with Arsene, it does pretty decent damage and knockback. So I definitely dispute the for sure thing. I need to acknowledge that, again, because we're going through different character discords, there's wildly different interpretations of this question sometimes, but no, I would still stand by my choice. Which means that every move from here on out sucks, including Hero's worst move. For Hero, I'm going to assume that I can't say, like, down special, except it's Hocus Pocus and it shrunk you or something like that. So I'm going to say up smash. Basically, the only possible redeeming feature that move has is the fact that you can critical hit with it. It's not good as an anti-air, it's not good out of shield, it doesn't get anywhere near as much benefit from the stat boost hero can put on as most of his other moves do because you're still not going to be breaking shields with this you're still not going to be running up into people's faces and hitting them with this now i know that you know that hero's worst move is either kerklang or metal slash right it's oh damn obvious for sure that it's one of those two but which one is worse? Okay, so I guess it's fair to choose just one specific spell out of the command menu. Out of these two, it's by far Metal Slash, though. Like, no contest. Metal Slash does essentially nothing unless it hits an opponent who's also metal. And I think in general gameplay without items, Hero is literally the only character who can do that. Whereas Kaklang has some ridiculously gimmicky and ultra-specific use cases, but they do technically exist. Definitely Kaklang. And that's what? because Kaklang gets you killed. Yeah! Now some of you might say, but it's hard to time my attack because the animation of him getting out of Kaklang isn't that long, and it's hard to react to. Well, you're wrong. If Hero uses Kaklang, wait about 2 seconds or something, then charge the smash attack. And now instead of trying to time it yourself when you think he will be vulnerable, stare at the metal hero and release the button as soon as he starts moving. If you always do it like this, it's incredibly easy. To be fair, I didn't actually know that, but god knows why I would have to. Kaklang does have a pretty strong hitbox though, while falling. But actually hitting this is nearly impossible. Yeah, of course it is, the move's terrible, but at least it does something if you hit someone with it. Again, it feels so pointless to even be arguing about this, because the move is terrible, don't use it. Hero has so many other broken things he can do at the ledge, why on earth would you be using Kaklang? But... Technically speaking, if you are really desperate to use the clang, say you're a YouTuber trying to get a clip, that's how you would use it. Now why is Metal Slash better? It's certainly garbage, don't get me wrong. It's only useful in a hero diddle and if your opponent is stupid enough to use Kaklang. But if you get launched off stage and you're trying to get zoom and you don't get it, the only way to cancel the menu in the air is to either double jump or air dodge which you don't want to do because air dodges are super laggy. If you don't have a double jump and you didn't get zoom, but you did get metal slash, you can use that to quickly get another shot at getting zoom. There are other moves huh. like, this, like flame slash for example, but metal slash only costs 6 MP. Now this very specific situation is of course not enough to save metal slash from being terrible, 
but it's a way better use than anything a clan can do. That's completely fair. I did not consider that. Okay, good catch. I'm actually convinced. Now you might think, oh, but that doesn't count because since both Metal Slash and Kaklang are moves you get with Command Selection, you're saying all the moves from Command Selection suck, right? You said so when talking about the Miss Input version of Alolan Whip. Yeah, but well, not I don't Samus. I really think that applies here. I just see Command Selection as a way to select many different moves that are also all completely different from each other. But if you do think it counts like that for some reason, then his worst move would be his dash attack. I'm not gonna go into detail why, because Hero's segment is already super long, just know that forward smash heavily outclasses it. Eh, if we're using this criteria, I would still say up smash for the record, especially since you can make the same argument that up tilt heavily outclasses it, particularly if he has buffs on him. That's because up tilt is way more reliable to connect with, so you're more likely to actually get some use out of the buffs. But honestly, who cares? I think by Pijigal's criteria, the command menu selections are valid. Benjo Kazooie, I know the sort of prevailing opinion for this one is probably going to be up air. Benjo mains really don't seem to like that move. It's kind of unreliable, and if you rise with it, it doesn't really have much payoff. If you land with it, it does have some kill confirm potential, but that's relatively specific to do and you don't really see Banjo players go for it. It's disjointed and it's fairly big, so it's a reasonable anti-air, but once you get the initial anti-air, that's just kind of it. I guess the other contender would be Dan Air, but at least as far as stall and falls go, it's a reasonably quick one that has a disjoint on it. For Banjo and Kazooie, it's Down Air. Yeah, this really is fine. Surprising. If you want to use it offstage to spike or something, you have to do it pretty high up and use a tricky double jump grenade egg then catch the egg without using an aerial or air dodging, then using up special, explode and up special again to make it back to the stage. Which is of course very slow, so it's easily punished if you miss. So the answer then is just don't go off stage with down air, which isn't really that big a deal. A lot of characters don't tend to do that anyways, particularly nowadays. And that's not even mentioning that the hitbox is tricky to land anyways. Banjo puts a full stop to his momentum and waits a bit before going down. The sweet spot doesn't last super long too, and the sour spot is really bad. The sour spot and sweet spot both deal the same amount of damage by the way, and there's no way you'd ever combo off of this move, so the sweet spot is really only for spiking, which we've already gone over, it's hard. It's only very niche use is escaping combos with it. But even then, it's not great at it. So I will say, proportionally for the category of moves they're in, as far as stall and fall down airs go, Banjo Kazooie's is not particularly bad. It's one of the quicker ones to start up, and it's got a disjoint on it, which is a nice luxury. It means that if you need to force your way down with down air, it is a little bit better than a lot of its competitors can do. Whereas their up air, you'd kind of put into that upward sword arc kind of category, where it's easily one of the worst among them. But in terms of the amount of use that the moves get in the particular kit, I think up air still inarguably does get more use than down air. So in retrospect. I think this is actually a perfectly good choice. Terry. His up tilt has a lot of payoff, but it's not that easy to land. Down smash is really quick, but surprisingly unsafe, and the payoff is not that good for it. Forward smash is a little bit on the underwhelming side too, but at least it does hit hard. I'll say down smash. For Terry, it's no surprise. It's Jap 3. Oh, we're doing just this like again. Okay, okay. Which is funny if you look at just the hitbox, because at a first glance, it looks pretty good. That's the problem, right? As a standalone jab, it's perfectly fine, but I get the selection criteria. But, I mean, how often have you seen this? And how often have you seen this? There I'm we go. I'm sure you've seen the memes. Byleth. This one has to be a mirror, right? The down special. It's got a little bit of interesting functionality, like being able to drop through platforms with it, but it's essentially Warlock Punch. It's mildly more usable Warlock Punch, and that's not a move you want to be compared to. Yeah, I'm looking at the rest of Byleth's moves right now, and nothing else even comes close. I was originally going to name a few moves that could be his worst, since he's still new and it might have been too early to determine what his worst move is. But when uh, no, it's a mirror. Byleth Discord and asked, it was pretty obvious that there's already a clear winner, and that would be his down special, Amir. There you go. I mean, it's pretty obvious when you think about it. If you use it while falling to the ledge, you actually get stuck on it for a little bit, which allows people to spike you for That's free. something I've never actually it's seen like come up in real special. situations, but I, I did know about it too. from earlier on in the game's life. It it's pretty funny. I like that they put that in there, one, even though it does make an already bad move even worse. And that's it. That is every 
single character's least useful move until some of them get inevitably buffed. Good video. Honestly, a good video. Obviously didn't agree with every category, wasn't expecting to. If I were to even review some of my own opinions from a few years ago, they would not even kind of line up anymore. I've done a bit of that. That might actually be fun to do more of at some point. And I know from the upload date on the video that Byleth is going to be the last character to be included. Let's just go through the last few here and I'll give my opinions on them. Min Min, I'm going to say our worst move is up special. It's got some versatility to it and it does work better on Min Min's kit specifically because you can do stuff like launch yourself into the air to pursue with the arms. But ultimately, she's kind of in the same camp as Krom, where her poor up special is a major thing keeping her in balance. I don't necessarily like that balance philosophy for the record, but it's undoubtedly being applied here. Steve, I've been sitting here trying to come up with one. He has no bad moves. I guess I'll say dash attack just because it's like the one tool I can find in his kit that doesn't have some kind of ridiculous horseshit application, but it's still not even mediocre once you start getting up to some of the better materials. Sephiroth, it's flare, mega flare, giga flare. And I always have a surprising amount of people argue with me about how good this move supposedly is and all of the supposed use cases it has. If you look through high level gameplay, that is a good Sephiroth playing against another genuinely good player. Trying to find footage of any of these connecting is genuinely really hard. For Pyra, I guess I'll go Flame Nova here just because it's a relatively niche option and she does not have a lot of moves like that. Her toolkit is just nuts across the board for the most part. And then Mithra Photon Edge. Once again, one of the major weaknesses of this character is their recovery and the main point of vulnerability is sometimes having to use Photon Edge. If taunts do count, Kazuya's worst move is obviously a side taunt. If not, it's the 10-hit combo because it doesn't actually work. You can get out of it. Arguably, you could actually make a case for this over the side taunt because of that, but at the very least, you know, maybe you can cancel the 10-hit combo and then go for a surprise grab instead or something along those lines. Whatever. And then finally for Sora, I'm gonna say is Danair. It does have some use and it has a bit more use for Sora specifically. He can go really low with it and still make it back, and if you do it from high enough and Sora is floaty enough to get up very high, you can actually auto cancel it. So it's somewhat of a safe landing, but I still have to say somewhat because it's actually incredibly unreliable because the hitbox spins around you. It's not always actually covering you from any particular angle. So it is possible to beat out randomly. I'm not saying your opponent is always necessarily going to want to do that, but they can do it. And there you go. Thanks for watching everyone. And let me know your thoughts on the choices as well as any other content you might want me to react to. YouTube heavily uses likes and comments to decide if a video should be passed around to more people. So if you think this deserves it, much appreciated. Animation tier list above. Main channel video on comeback mechanics below, and patrons, YouTube members, and Twitch subs get perks like early videos and Discord access. Later, people!